Good morning, little good guests and scientists, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that it's crucial for the local scientific community to share and exchange ideas and research work with those from across, which significantly have Vietnam accelerate international integration. The seven international conference on nature of computation and communication ICT CC 20 and 21 take place in cyberspace due to the travel restriction caused by the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. It's the co-organized by European Alliance for Innovation, Ho Chi Minh City, Open University and Wilton US and, and Wilton University. In organizing the conference, we are also honored to have been well guided and supported by the three co-organizers. We are happy to see the conference has attracted various pro prominent scientists from over six countries worldwide and welcome your innovative idea and research work on nature of communication and communication in an attempt to formalize a new computing system in the future. On behalf of the co-organizer, we would like to take this opportunity to express our sincere appreciation to all the participants and the co-organizer for their valuable and continued guidance, support and cooperation, which are indispensable for the success of this events. We wish you good health, happiness and every success in your career and development, especially in further research in the future to further accelerate the development of the science. Thank you for your attendance. Dear ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the EEI ICTCC 2021, the seventh EEI International Conference on Nature of Computation and Communication. I am Alexander Sojajowska, the EEI Conference Manager of ICTCC. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I am not able to meet all of you in person, so I am using this opportunity to address the organizing committee, the keynote speakers, the authors and the participants on behalf of the European Alliance for Innovation. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for being a part of this conference and for your involvement with EEI. Above all, I would like to express my gratitude to the General Chair, Fan Kong Vinh, for his hard and excellent work throughout the whole process of the conference preparation. During today's event, you can actively participate in two ways. Firstly, you can join the Q&A on Slack through a link that you can see below this video. Upon accessing the EEI ICTCC 2021 Slack workspace, you can enter the channel called Discussion. Secondly, you can vote on individual presentations and leave your fellow researchers' feedback on their work through EEI Compass. I would also like to use this message to invite you to join us again soon. I am glad to announce that the next edition of the conference will take place in October 2022 at Meng Kong University in Vietnam. I invite all of you to participate in ICTCC 2022. Should you be interested in being a part of the Technical Program Committee, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address below. Similarly, if you are interested in discussing other possible cooperation, organizing a conference or a workshop, please contact me at my email address as well. To sum up, it is our honor to organize this year's edition of ICTCC Conference. I hope you will have a wonderful time during this event and that you will follow the next edition in 2022. We will keep you posted and the news about this event will be available on the conference website. Now our community manager Michal will talk more about what EEI does, who we are and how you can get involved in our various activities. Thank you for your attention and enjoy EEI ICTCC 2021. I hope to welcome you again next year in Vietnam.
Hi everyone, my name is Michal Dudic. I'm the Community Manager at EEI, European Alliance for Innovation. It's my pleasure to welcome you at this conference uh, and say a few words about who we are and what we can do for you and your research career. In short, EEI is a global community for a greener, healthier and smarter world. As of today, we are home to more than 60,000 members from 167 countries and we reach out to tens of thousands of subscribers. As an organization, we are nonprofit from day one, and what is most important to us is that we remain open to all researchers from all around the world thanks to membership that is completely free. We organize more than 100 events annually, such as this conference, and we do so in publishing partnership with Springer. I said in the beginning that EAI is a community, so let's talk about what that means and what it means for you. To put it briefly, we give our members a platform that builds their research. We do it with three main online community services where members come together to help each other write a better paper, get an objective review, and get recognized fairly. The three services in question are EAI Compass, Community Review, and EAI Index. Firstly, EAI Compass is an online app where you can meet and connect with new colleagues and get feedback on your paper as well as your presentation. In addition to that, it lets you download all full papers that will be presented at this conference and you can vote on your favorite presentations as well as see everyone who is here and connect with them. You can do this right now if you go to EAI Compass website, compass.eai.eu. Next, we are improving the classic conference review process with community review. It has already been in use at all our events since 2019 and we were very excited to hear a lot of positive feedback from program committee members regarding the reliability and the speed of the community review. Let's talk briefly about what community review does. Essentially, it is a website that shows abstracts of papers that are right in the middle of the review process, as long as the authors allow it, of course and all EAI members may then bid to review specific papers. When they submit their bid, they put in their bio and their qualifications, which are sent to the program committee, who can then decide whether or not this bidder is qualified to review the paper they bid on. This relatively easy access to review opportunities means that bidders really need to put their best foot forward if they wish to be selected, which improves the quality of the entire review process. At the end of the day, this benefits you, the author. And last but not least, let me tell you a thing or two about EAI Index. EAI Index is our credit-based evaluation system that we rolled out this year to all of our conferences and journals that allow you to climb the global ranks of EAI community and get recognized for your work. It calculates a number value for most actions you make, such as getting your paper accepted or submitting a review, and these numbers accumulate for 12 months. At the end of this 12-month period, we put together a ladder of all EEI members, and the ones at the top receive a nomination to one of the membership ranks – senior member, distinguished member, or fellow. For each action that is eligible for EEI index credits, we'll look at the quality of your action as it was evaluated by another member of the community, such as, for example, the review score of your submission. To make sure that the system is fair to newcomers, every 12 months the credit count gets erased, the ones at the top receive their nominations, and every member starts at zero for the following 12 months. And finally, Smart Submit is a collaboration feature that is coming later this year. It will allow you to submit your research ideas and your work in progress abstracts to get the kind of help and feedback you're looking for. Maybe you are looking for co-authors, maybe you would like to find a mentor or a mentee, or maybe you want to find out how the community feels about your idea. This is what Smart Submit is designed for. Ultimately, it's about helping you write a better paper and increasing your chances of getting accepted. Again, we will be launching this feature later this year, so stay tuned. And so I'm going to leave you with many different ways to get engaged at different levels. There are lots of opportunities in many of our events and publications, which means many ways to connect with people and collaborate. You may learn more about everything I just talked about at our website, eai.eu. 
These services exist to help you and to make your lives easier, so we encourage you to send us your comments, ideas, and feedback to community at eai.eu. And if you are interested in volunteering and contributing, you can let us know at the same email address. Don't forget that you can use EAI Compass to vote on presentations in real time to determine which ones are the best, as well as to download all full papers that will be presented today. Just make sure that you log in using the same email address as the one you used to register to this conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please enjoy the conference and I hope we will see everyone online soon. Hello everyone, my name is Francois Siwe. I am a reader in computer science at the Montford University, Leicester, in the United Kingdom. I'm very pleased to be invited to give a keynote speech at the ICCA SA 2021 conference. In this keynote, I will introduce you to the calculus of context aware ambient that has been developed as a formal notation to specify or reason about the behavior of context-aware systems. The outline of the presentation is as follow. I will start with a motivation, then I will talk about the main features of CCA. Uh, then I will introduce the notion of ambient. That is the main concept in the calculus. And then I will show you how to model using ambient. Then we will go in deep go deeper in the syntax and semantics of CCA, and then I introduce the tool support for CCA, and then finish by a, an application of CCA to the Internet of Things. Mark Weiser, the founder of PMC Computer System in 1991, also known as Ubiquitous Computer System, justified the vision of that new paradigm with the, with the following co uh, quote. The most profound technology are those that disappeared. They wave themselves into the fabric of everyday life until they are indistinguishable from it. So that means that a ubiquitous computer system or PMC systems are systems that are aware of the environment or the context of use and adapt their behavior if the environment changes. So context awareness is a very important property for emphasis on the ubiquitous computer system. Context awareness on mobility are known as enabling mechanism for the design of PEF systems, cyber physical system on the internet of things. That's why the Calculus of Context Awareness, CCA, was designed to model a uh, reason about the behavior of this type of system. So CCA can help to cope with the large scale on the heter heterogeneity on high distribution of context aware system. How CCA can also help to control complexity using abstraction during the system design. CCA can help the, the formal specification using CCA help you to get a deeper understanding of the system behavior through simulation and visualization. There are tools that have been developed for that. Also, we can use CCA to analyze the correct property of critical safety critical component of the system. Here are a couple of examples of uh, context aware system that we by abbreviation we call it. CAS, CS. One of them is a smart home where uh, appliances are interconnected in the, in, the, in, the, in the home network. So your fridge, your home computer, the security set at home, the light, the doorbell that are interconnected and that can extend information. So in the near future, our street will be, uh, we, will, we, will, we look like this. So we have self-driving car moving around by themselves without any driver, using their context awareness to guide themselves 
in the street. Then the city of future, which is also we should also know as a smart city, is a city where water, the water system, the the electricity, the electricity, the, the energy grid, and the transportation system are interconnected, and that can extend information. That is the management of those mega. Uh, uh, smart, uh, smart cities using technology. So CCA will help to specify that kind of system. So just here are the main feature of the calculus. So uh, the one of the feature is the concurrency, it means that we could have system running many systems running in parallel at the same time. So uh, it has the feature of context awareness. Processes in CCA can be aware of their context so that they can change their behavior depending on context. Mobility is also an important feature in CCA. So uh, the concept of ambient that I'm going to introduce later uh, is a way to represent any entity in a smart system. Then those entities can be mobile, like a car, like a user. That kind of mobility can be more than in CCA. Then, uh, here is the URL uh, to the CCA web page, website, if you want to have more detail on, on the calculus. So, what is an ambient? As I said, an ambient is a conceptual representation of a thing. So any of the object that you see on, on this slide can be represent, represented as an ambient. The main characteristic of the ambient in the calculus is that the ambient can have the capability to move, it can be mobile, it can have the capability to be able to sense the presence of other ambient. The ambient also can have the capability to exchange messages with other ambients. And an and, and ambient can also contain child ambience. So the a, a, a CCA process is a hierarchy of ambience. So how do you represent an ambient in the calculus? An ambient has a very simple notation. Here in the textual representation, you give it a name and then a behavior. So an ambient has a name and then it has a behavior. The name is represented here by N and the behavior is represented by, by the P. For process, so we also have a graphical notation, just to ease to increase the lisibility of uh, of uh, CCA pro process specifications. So you can use graphical notation or you can use textual notation. So uh, how do we model using Ambient? So we can represent any entity in the smart environment as an Ambient. So we can represent a smart device as an ambient. You just have to give it a name and then a behavior. We can represent the location of the smart device as an ambient. In this example here, you have a device here, let's say a sensor that's located in the kitchen. So the kitchen here is a, a location, but we can still use the concept of ambient to represent it. We can also represent the context of the user of a device. Here you have Bob and Alice in the kitchen. That's the context. Okay, so Bob is using a, a, a mobile phone and Alice is holding a tablet. We can represent it like that. So you can see here the phone is with Bob in the kitchen while the tablet is with Alice in the kitchen. So we have a holistic approach to system design here. So we take into account not only the process or the device, also the environment in which the device is deployed. Okay, so we can consider different, different scenarios. In this scenario here, we have here the kitchen is next to the dining room. And then Bob is in the kitchen carrying a mobile device and Alice is in the dining room using a tablet. So you can describe the environment uh, using the concept of ambient. 
and then the, the, hum, the ambient hierarchy structure. So that's how we model using ambient. The calculus also allow ambient to be mobile. This is an example here. So I have Bob in the kitchen and I have Alice in the in the dining room. So this the, the, we will give Bob the capability to move from the kitchen to the dining room to join Alice in the dining room. So here you have the out means that you 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 move out of your parent. Then you have the capability in that allows you to move in another ambient. So Bob's going to move out of the kitchen, then into the corridor. Then he's going to move inside the dining room. Then he's going to move inside the dining room. So the ambient mobility is performed using the out to move out of a location and the in to move in a location. Ambient can send messages. They can send messages locally. That means inside the ambient using the send and receive capabilities. Okay, this is a semantic for that. If you have these two processes, the first process want to send a value A, and then the second process want to receive in a variable X. <coughs> the reduction is going to produce a, a process which is the continuation of the first one, which is P here. On the, in parallel with the continuation of the second one, here uh, the, this notation between uh, curly bracket is the substitution of of x to the value of a. So, the, as any process calculus, we have a, a reduction semantic for CCA. Uh, these are the, se the semantic rule that allow to do that kind of reduction. The semantic rule that allow to do that kind of reduction. Okay, so we can also have parent to child communication. A parent M here receiving a message from a child ambient N. Then the reduction is going to happen, and then the data, the data is going to move into the parent's process. Okay, you can also have sibling to sibling uh, communication uh, in a similar way. So we have two ambient which are sibling they can send messages in that way okay so uh so this is the syntax of cca the, the of the cca processes so the behavior of ambient is described by a process so this is the language that you use to specify the behavior of a process the first process is the the null process it does nothing the zero it does nothing and then terminate immediately so we have here the prefix process it perform a capability m and continue like p we have parallel composition of two processes here then you have here the replication like in the pi calculus uh, this is a process that creates a new copy of p every time that can create a new copy of p anytime so new and P here, this process here is is a is a restriction process. So it says that the the name n is local to the process p. So this is a notation for an ambient ambient n with the behavior p here. Then we have the context guarded prefix. So this is a prefix. This is a context guarded prefix because you have a you have a context expression here to control the execution of this process. Okay, so this process is executed only if the environment satisfies the context expression here. So let's say that a context expression is a formula over the context. It's a property it, it used to express the property of, of the environment. This the process, a context guarded prefix is executed only when the environment satisfies the specified property here, the K here. The find process here is a search process a look for value y1 to y and such that the formula the cost expression k is satisfied for those values then you're going to use those values in p to do some form of computation this is a generalized f uh, if uh, statement uh, it has many branches 
controlled by, guarded by uh, context expressions. And then you can also have a, a S branch for the if statement. So the let statement uh, is used to do some form of arithmetic operations. So we are going to evaluate uh, the arithmetic expression E1 until EL and store those values respectively in X1 till XL. And then the variable X1 to XL are used in P. Okay, so that's how we do the, the arithmetic expression and use the, the result of the evaluation of those expressions in P to do some form of computation. So uh, the last one is a proc. The proc here introduce a process abstraction. So you define a process abstraction that has some a number of parameters and then the, the body of the abstraction given by, by P. So as process abstraction can be think of as a procedure or a function in programming languages. So I define a function that you can use, you can call at different places in your specification. So uh, that's for the, the language, the grammar for, for processes. So now we are going to talk about capability. So the capability are the atomic action that our ambient can perform. As we, 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 just, we just saw, uh, we see that uh, there are movement capability like in and out. Uh, the skip here is just, a, it doesn't do any computation, but it takes time. It's one transition. Uh, then you have a del, you can delete a, a ambient name n. And then you have the communication uh, capability, like send and receive, right? Uh, send and receive. Alpha here represents the, the location. Whether it's a parent or a sibling, or the or is done locally or a child. Okay, to represent a sibling, we use the the double colon. Uh, to represent a parent, we use the at. Then to represent a child, we use we use the key. We use the hash key. Okay, locally we don't use any symbol. That's why we, well, that's why we represent it here by epsilon. Yeah, that means an empty string. Okay, that's for the capability. The capability are the atomic action that a process can perform. Then we're going to talk about the context expressions. The context expressions are formulas that allows a process to control, uh, that, allows the control that allows the process to, to sense the state of the environment. Okay, so we describe the state of the environment that has to be satisfied for a process to be performed using context expressions. So this is the, this is the logic, it's a modal logic. Uh, the two main modalities are the next, these are special next modalities that allow under the somewhere modalities that allow to look around the ambient hierarchy to see if certain property hold somewhere in the, in the, in the ambient hierarchy. So we have true that hold for any context. You have uh, n equal to m. It's a name match. It, it, it holds only if the two names are exactly the same. So this here refers to the actual process. Uh, and then the not and the and and the or, they, they, they use the, uh, the usual, they keep the usual uh, logical meaning here. Then you have the parallel composition here of two formula here, two context expression here. Okay, this is when you this the whole if the context has can be split into two parallel components, so that k one one k one hole for one, and then k two holes for another for another for the other component. Okay, so this one here the location here n between square brackets k represent here an ambient the internal context of an ambient that represents an ambient with the internal context k so have an ambient n whose internal context satisfies the property k okay this is an example use that language you can define your you can define uh, many predicates you can define many predicates depending on application here the first one, the first one has allow ambient to check if it has a char ambient called N. At allow ambient to check if that ambient is at the location N. Uh, the width allow ambient to check if that ambient is with another ambient N. 
So the, 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 the yeah, so yeah, and then the second one with two uh, parameters allow to check if uh, at n, m allow to check if n is uh, located, if m is located at n, if m is located at n. The next one with n, m, check if n, m are together, okay? Uh, the, the, have the same parents as so sibling ambience. Okay, so how do we define the semantic here? I'm going to go very quickly uh, in a, around, uh, about the semantic of uh, context aware, context, aware, uh, context expression, sorry. So what is the context? We have to have a good understanding of what contexts are. Based on the definition by day in 1993, that's very, that's very much, that's very, that's widely used in the literature. A context is any information that can be used to characterize the situation of an entity. An entity is a person, place, or object that is considered relevant to the interaction between the, a user and an application, including the user and applications themselves. So that's a very general definition of context that comprise uh, that encompasses different aspects of the environment. For example, the user location, who the user is with, the nearby people and resources, the user preferences, all of these are taken into account uh, are covered by uh, the definition given by day here. So uh, we design the context expression in such a way that uh, they are able to represent this kind of context. Uh, it's a logic that can be used to specify the user location, who the user is with on. We hear by user we understand the ambient, which relates to an ambient. Where the, the location of the ambient, who the, the ambient is with, the nearby ambient resources, and then, and then the preferences as well. Okay, so how do we represent, what's, what we understand that context expression are formula that characterizes the property of a context. So what is a context? How do we represent a context physically? So in CCA, a context is like a process with a hole in it. And then the hole is represented by this uh, uh, circle with a dot inside. The, the, and that represents the location of the process that context is the context of. Okay. So this is the language to represent a context. It's like a process, but it contains a whole. So we are going to have things like um, a context zero that represents a context that contains no information. The context that represents the context, uh, the circle with the dot inside that we call whole, that represents the, the ambient or the process the actual that point on the actual process itself. It represents the process itself, the location. It's a placeholder for the for the for the the process itself. The process we are, yeah, the process itself. Uh, and then we can have a context that is form, it has the ambient, and then it has uh, what is inside, it has the internal context of an ambient N. So you can have an ambient, you can have a context parameter process, then you can have a restriction in context as well. Here, note that uh, we, because of this syntax, we only allowed a maximum of one hole in a context. We cannot have more than one hole in context. Or it's a process, or it's a process in parallel with, sub, with the whole, with sub context that contains a single hole. <coughs> okay, so this slide just explain what I just talked about. So you know now we define the semantic. Uh, let's look at an example first. I think yeah, I have an example first. So here I have a context. Here we remember we had Bob and Alice in the kitchen. Bob having a smartphone and Alice having a tablet. So if you want to look at the context of the mobile phone, of Bob's mobile phone, we just replace the, the Bob mobile phone by the whole. Then that becomes the context of the mobile phone. In the kitchen, so the move. This, so this, you see that the, the whole represents the location of the mobile phone, 
and then the whole law, all of this represent the context of the mobile phone in the kitchen. Okay, you, based on the, the ambient hierarchy. So in the context of the mobile phone, you have Bob, you have Alice, you have a tablet, then you have the kitchen organized as described by, by the hierarchy. Okay, so that's an example. So we use uh, the that context model to give a semantic to context expression. So now we use the the, the, satisf the satisfaction relation here to define the semantic of a context expression with respect to context. So we we'll say that a, the context expression true is that uh, is is satisfied by any context. And then if the name the, the relation name equal to the, the name the identity if the name two names are identical they, they are satisfied by any context okay the context expression this is only satisfied for the whole context then you can go on to define the other property the other context expression the symmetric other context expression for example the not k here if c satisfied the not k uh the not k uh, no uh, c satisfied not k if only if c doesn't satisfy k and then uh, c satisfy k1 parallel k2 if only if c can be decomposed into two component parallel components c1 and c2 such that uh, c1 uh, satisfies k1 and c2 satisfies k2 So these are just example of rules. I didn't want to give the whole semantic here. So if you want to know about the whole semantic, we can if it's someone more paper. I'm going to give the list of the paper at the end of the uh at, at the last in the last slide in the references. Okay, let's talk about uh tool support for CC. So I talk about the language, how we can modulate the language. This is the tool support. We have two tools for CCA, CCAPL and CCA spin. So uh, CCAPL is the interpreter for uh, CCA. So any specification, any specification of CCA can be executed. That's very important uh, uh, because if the, you can you can provide uh, a prototype of your system, you can simulate your, your system at the early stage of the system design. Okay, so here the CCAPL, what it does is that it receives as input your specification, CCA specification. Then you can produce different type of output. It can be the execution traces, it can be a communication graph, or it can be a behavior graph. So you can produce the output of CCA, it can be textual or graphical, just to make it easy to understand the behavior of the process being simulated. So in practice, we use CCA as a simulator. Uh, so this is the execution traces, the textual output here. So you can see all the communication um, or movement of the different ambient here. Okay, so when you look at the first one, the first one is, is, is a local communication. Do I have is, is a ambient called sensor that set the value 10 to himself. Okay, so so here this is the sender, that's the receiver, and between parentheses is the message that's been sent. Okay, you can see that like that in the graphical notation, that's a communication graph. You see all the interaction that has taken place, the sender receive that's taken place in, in the in the specification, in the execution. So uh, the top uh, at the top of the of the graph, you have the list of the ambient involved in the execution so in this example here you have three ambience t sensor thermostat and then the heat these are the three ambience that's being involved okay you also you can also have a behavior graph a behavior graph looks like a communication graph with a list of ambient at the top but uh, we see boxes like that the gray boxes here show the movement of ambient for example the first box at the top means that Bob has moved from info station one from IS1 to the root, to the root ambient. So it shows the movement of ambient. Okay. Movement of ambient in the box. So Bob moved from IS1 to root, for example. Here, it moved from root 
to IS2. Okay, then the, the, the horizontal arrows represent the communication, and then the label on the on the arrow represent the message as be exchange. Okay, that's for CCAPL. Another tool is a CSPIN. So it's a verification tool. So what SPIN does, so is you can you write your model as previously in a CCA case, but you can also provide a a property, a formula, a property that you want to check. You want to check if the model satisfied satisfies a certain property. The language used here for the property specification language here is LTL, linear temporal logic. So you as as input you provide your CC specification and uh, the property you want to verify. It. Uh, then as input to CCA spin, CCA spin is going to generate a a promoter specification. So it's going to combine the two input and produce a, a a program in Promela. The Promela is the programming language for spin. And then you can use a spin model checker to execute and verify the Promela model that's been pro produced by CCA spin. Uh, then after spin has processed, then you can see the, how the, the, the verification report, okay, it produced the verification report. Uh, spin has a very nice uh, graphical interface that's very uh, user friendly, so you can play around with it. As much as you want, and there are different type of you can check for the log, you can check for reachability, you can check for um, <coughs> uh, assertions, you can check assertion violation, anything that you, you want. Safety property as well. Okay, so that's the, that's that's the idea that spin produce from CCA uh, produce a Promela program. And that Promela pro, uh, Promela program can be executed by Spin, and then the Spin is going to do the verification and produce the output. So that's this is the interface for for the Spin model checker. Okay, let's look for an example now. Uh, I said I'm going to show you how we can use CCA to specify uh, IoT systems. In this case, I've chosen the Cisco packet tracer. That's be extended to cater for uh, Internet of Things. So initially, uh, the packet tracer tool was designed for network simulation developed by Cisco system, ENC, for, for as a network simulator. Then from version 7, that's been extended to simulate also uh, Internet of Things, to design Internet of Things. So in the Cisco packet tracer, you can design your system like that. So you have a mobile phone that is connected to a, a cell uh, tower. Here and then you can have a, a here you have a switch, you have a router, uh, you have different kind of modem here that you connect them together. And then here you have, for example, a, a smart home here with a smart lamp, a, a webcam, a PC, and a coffee machine that are connected together through a home gateway. Then here you have the office that contains a lamp, a, a office computer. And then in this network put together, you can control uh, uh, the lamp, uh, the, the devices in your room from your office, or you can you can control it from from your, using your mobile phone in the street. You are in the street, then you can turn the light on or off in your in your home, or you can turn the light, uh, the light on or off in your office. You can switch on the coffee machine before you get home. So this kind of, yeah, you can see that system in, in Cisco packet tracer like that. And then you can simulate it as well. Then play around with it. So uh, what we're trying to do here is we're going to show you that uh, we can translate this into a CCA program or use our verification tool for it, a simulation verification tool to analyze it. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, how uh, you can translate each of these devices into a CCA specification it's in a very straightforward manner. <coughs> so the different devices used uh, use in Cisco Packet Tracer are the network devices like router, switches, hub, Wi-Fi access point, uh, cell tower, 
and so on. Then you have the end device like PC, laptop, tablet, smartphone, servers. Then uh, Cisco refer to IoT devices as AOE device. AOE means uh, Internet of Everything. Okay, so this include home appliances, fan, door, light, uh, other component, electronic component like uh, boards, like uh, macro uh, controller unit, simple board computer, sensors, actuators. The different type of connection you can have any type of connection you want to use: coaxial, fiber, USB, copper crossover. Okay, so all of this. So here we show you how you can model uh, how the device is actuators. This is a template for actuators. Actuator is a, is a device whose state can be changed by the controller. So it's a uh, electromechanical device. Uh, you can, it has a container uh, uh, electromechanical device that allows to change the state, the change the state here, yeah? uh, usually depending on the output from the con from the controller so we can specify like that so uh, it's an ambient we can represent you represent any actuator as an ambient that receives a signal a command from a controller perform the command and terminate okay perform the command it receive or it always receive from the controller a command from the controller to turn on or to turn off then perform the command and wait for another command and wait for the next command okay that's what, how the actuator works so this is the general structure for actuator routine CCA so for any given actuator you just have to change the name and set and change the connection and set the connection properly to the appropriate controller and then it's ready to go so it will work okay uh, environment variable environment variable are used to model the the state of some phenomenon in the environment it can be the temperature it can be the light it can be so you have environment variable to, to do that so this is how you can specify the environment variables here so the them you provide some model of so you're going to receive uh, a number of data from the surrounding user data to, prov to produce an outcome. I use that data to produce an outcome. That is going to be sent to the sensor. So this is the template for any environment variable in the system. <coughs> Sensors, sensor are device that can read the environment variable. They receive messages from the environment variable. And then can send that information to the controller so the sensor is going to connect to the environment variable and then receive the information from me and then send it to the corresponding controller the controller is connected to so this is a template for that so I have a sensor name is connected to a specific a sense the state of a specific environment variable then here you receive the value from that and then you send that value to the server okay send it to the server the server is going to refer to the to the, to the sensor so it's going to receive the value okay so here we have the microcontroller okay microcontroller like okay like uh, arduino okay this kind of uh, uh, board okay you can program a you know, using that you have the famous loop uh, function here we represent the, the loop function by using a, a a process abstraction so you have proc and then loops and then you put all the definition here of the code that's going to be executed continuously and then uh, another uh, statement that's very important when developing code for microcontroller is the delay okay the time delay here we can use a skip to, to model uh, as an abstract time unit okay we use skip here as an abstract time unit you can use skip to model time in, in the microcontroller here 
it's extra time because it can be one minute, it can be one second, it can be one day, depending on what application is. Okay. Then you define the process, then you can call it, then you call it there. So it's going to run forever. Okay. Uh, how do you represent a wireless access point? Here, the main thing here, uh, wireless access point can be represented as an ambient. So uh, the, the, the range uh, of the access point is represented by the boundary of the ambient. Okay, so any ambient, that's inside any ambient or device, that's inside, which is a child ambient to, to, to the wireless access point, is thought to be in the range. Of the access point okay so that's how the, the access point interact with the child ambient which is the device uh, that's the range that represents the device that are in range with the access point so that's how the communication takes place so you receive the message in terms of sender recipient and the message do some computation in p and then eventually send the output <coughs> okay, so design pattern for user device. A user device should be able to send or receive messages. So here, you, you very absolute, very simple abstraction of user device. We don't care if it's a mobile phone, is a or if it's a tablet. It has to be, it need to have the capability to send and to receive messages. So we can represent it like that. Then you can represent your mobile phone, your iPad, anything that you any device, commercial device that you have, you can represent it using this this template here send or receive <coughs> in IoT especially for access control here uh, another important uh, identification when the RFID system is very much used so an uh, RFID tag or card for us can be represented as an ambient it's just an ambient that store a number the ambient st store a number that's what it is here is the visa number so it's a it's an ambient that's willing to send a number all the time that's the number that's inside that's the number uh, uh represented by the rfid that's the rfid number so you try to send it out that's what it is represented by the ambient that's willing to send all the time then you have a, a rfid reader here which is ambient which is willing to read from an rfid so when it reads from RFID, it's going to send to a server. So the server is going to check if the, the, the number that is received is correct or not, and then I'll reply with a, to change the status of the of the reader. So the reader is going to turn the reader the, the reader is going to turn red if the number is not good, turn to green if the number is a good is a good number okay and then based on that uh, based on that information the server can also open the door <coughs> if it's used for your access control okay uh, design pattern for server server also a very important component when uh, in the internet of things so you have to store you have the cloud you have to store information on the cloud. Uh, some of the software uh, that are shared are stored on the cloud. So devices have to access to the to have to have access to the server most of the time to do certain certain computation. So server is important. But here in the abstraction used for server here is very simple. So a server uh, is a is an ambient that receives information. As receive a request from a client, perform the request perform the request okay uh, that's what it is a server receive a request from the client and process the, the request that's what it does all the time it does that all the time that's why we have the exclamation mark here that correspond to the replication it repeat itself all the time so this ambient here the first ambient here uh, this first specification here uh, the ambient, uh, let's say, this send at the end and this pair of send are used to for synchronization. So uh, when you receive a request, it process a request before it can take another request. 
But if you want to process many requests at the same time, you can use a second specification here. You receive a request and start processing it. Uh, during that time, you can receive another request because this exclamation mark is going to create as many copy of this process as, as needed. Okay, so uh, this is a specification for RAW for the switches. Okay, I will explain it to you the same way. So you have a template for the switches. To the switch, you can connect many devices before you connect them to a router. Okay, this is a specification for a router as well. Okay, so I a little bit more elaborated, but to cope with uh, uh, the cope with uh, uh, a routing table. So I just want to to record a routing table the way we do it. That we use a notion of subnet address, and then you have an ambient a hierarchy of ambient to represent. Uh, uh, um, the root, okay, to represent the root. So, uh, in this structure here, we say that, for example, here, router 2 here, to reach router 2, you have to go through router 2, or to reach router 3, you have to go through router 2, uh, depend on the, on the architecture, on the structure. So, you say here, to reach uh, the subnet address, you have to use the Foley hub to do that. So, you that kind of hierarchy to do that. Okay, so uh, let's look at an example here. Some kind of application of the template I just tell you. So we have here a, a simple a smart uh, smart garage here. We want to control access to this garage using a RFID uh, reader, <coughs> a server, which is a home gateway, then a lamp. We suppose that the lamp is inside the garage here. So if the when the user show uh, RFID card, if that if it's allowed to access the building. The door is going to open and then the light is going to turn on. Otherwise, <coughs> what is going to happen? Okay, it's going to be locked out. Okay, so we can use those templates that we mentioned to represent the lamp, which is the actuator here. We can the lamp as an actuator. The RFID, is RFID reader, uh, use the spec, and then the home gateway is a server. Okay, and then the ambient for the garage, comes like that, is a, is also an actuator that can open and close the door. That's a, that's a garage door can open and close the door, it's also an actuator. So you put all of them in parallel, all those components in parallel, then you get a system. Then you can run it and get a simulation of it. So here you can see all the components that are involved, all the ambient that's involved in the simulation, in the specification. And then you can see all the behavior here. This is a timeline here, the behavior here, all the information that's been exchanged. So in this case here, uh, the RFID uh, had a number he set the number uh, 102 to the RFID reader. RFID does forward the, the message to the home gateway. The home gateway say that is valid. <coughs> say that is valid. Because it was valid, the home gateway open the door, uh, turn on the light or open the door. It turn on the light, it dim the light, and then open the door. Okay, and then the process continues. Okay, so uh, that's uh, what you can do with CCA. Uh, in this uh, presentation, we we'll talk about the main features in of CCA, uh, the notion of ambient that is used to represent anything, anything in a uh, in the environment, whether it's a device, whether it's a table, whether it's an ob any object. So we we'll show you how we can use the notion of ambient to to model. Uh, uh, context aware systems, um, internet of things. And then we talk about the syntax, the symmetry of CCA, and then also uh, present the main two tool support, CCA PL, and CCA, which is a simulator, uh, and then uh, the model checking tool, which is CCA Spin. We also show you how we can model the internet of thing uh, system using CCA. We provide a number of templates, a design pattern, that allows you to put together uh, very quickly uh, the specification of uh, any IoT system. Uh, for further uh, uh, so study about uh, CCA, we have got uh, I put here a number of references that you can use. Uh, I also mentioned at the beginning in the URL to the website of CCA. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.
Hello everyone, my name is Yang, work for Tien Yang University. My topic today is table random vector and Gaussian coupler for stock market data. My ally into introductions table random vector and Gaussian coupler application for Vietnam stock markets and pollution. Until the 1970, normality substance were used in most of the statistical analysis. However, in application, normal distribution don't allow heavy tail, especially in finance and risk management studies, arises a solution to central limits problems. Stable distribution and natural heavy tail extensions of normal distributions. In the case on big dimensions, there are several methods to estimate stable parameters and reliable events to continue stable densities, cumulative distribution functions, and quantiles. But in practice, the use of the heavy tail models has been practiced by the lack of the tools for multivariate stable distributions, especially dependence between coordinates of a random vector. That is the covariance matrix doesn't exist for heavy data. This program can be solved by the tool of Coppola, which derives the dependent structure connecting random variables, giving an opportunity to separate the dependent structure and national distributions. Therefore, Coppola can help to investigate dependent structure of stable random vector more easily. The basically, Gaussian Coppola is simple, a possible, and popular in applications and available in computer realms. It usually reads the complexity of stable couplers that was to a mass in a small case. The first, we introduce some basic concepts about coupleless and stable window vector in our study. As an extension of the multivariate normal distributions, a random vector S is RD is a stable distribution if for any positive numbers A, B, there is a positive number C and a vector D such that two vector A is 1 plus B is 2 and C, S plus B are the same distribution. It's 1, it's 2, it will be the study of S. The numbers A, B, C, 35, familiar. AFA plus BFA equals CFA. The number alpha in 0, 2, 
we count the index of stability are generated with this exponents. Difficulty is very stable to use as it does. Although the probability density of L5 stable in the vector exists and continues, but they are now in the form with a few exceptions. Characteristic functions have used and determined by L5 mean vector and spectral measure on the use here. But these calculations are complicated and the new recall methods are used. Copulars are to more modeling dependence of a random vector with any marginal distributions. But Scratterland, that's a d-dimension random vector x, copula of x is a funds c that is a cumulative distribution function of inverse marginals in formula 2. That is the strong distribution function. That uh, is one. That is the original distribution function. Especially the Gaussian copula is the most popular in applications. It's in line derived from the correlation matrix sigma and mean vector mu of a multivariate Gaussian distribution function and is given by the following formula. Their three is cumulative distribution functions of unique variable Gaussian distributions. Moreover, the calculations of Gaussian copula is available on computer software, such as AI software. One side of the day of copula is invariant, present in global system 1. Vector is once it is of continuous random variables with couple C. T1, T3 are strictly increases on when is 1, when is T. Then vector T1 is 1, T3 is D also have couple C. We approach Gaussian couple for studying stable random vector with two main results in turn 2 and turn 3. Turn 2, the best, it sees a Gaussian copula of a normal distributed random vector S, which was still defined convariance matrix. Then for every number L5 in 0, 2, there is an L5 stable random vector DPU, such that C is also the copula of DPU. And for given L5 in 0, 2, that is the a Gaussian random vector with positive defined covariance matrix, such that an eternal matrix B, matrix A, certified to condition 4 and 5. Then we use star a random vector with L5 stable marginals, such that the particular of the previous star and uh, S equal then still use star is L5 stable in the vector. From the Voltaire lab, we suggest a uh, Gaussian we'll suggest whether a uh, data set can be fit to any stable in the vector or not. With two step details as follows. Step 1. To estimate stable parameters of data marginals and to test if our marginals have L5 stable distribution with a common suitable choices L5. Step 2. To estimate a Gaussian copula for the change from data having normal distribution marginals and to test if the original data are fit to that Gaussian copula. If uh, 
uh, two steps are uh, stratified. It can be to do the data with the head table distribution with the table DT index alpha. Besides, we got the formula of computing density functions of stable random vector having no certain calculus. We can compute easily probability density functions of stable random vector by cumulative distribution functions of marginal S1, SD and Gaussian vector uh, is more flexible than universe methods. The results have applied for Vietnam stock markets data. It has set a low daily return of the stock BID, VCD, FLC, and VNN. With a symbol size 497 from July 24-2017 to October 14-2019. Observations developed from public security websites. There is a stock on Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange. Table 1 So normal distribution set for marginal on the value smaller than 5% confirm the significant reverse from normal distribution of the four dimension vector. Table 2 So Commonwealth similar step for universal um, stability on the value uh, greater than 5% and also agreements to the rule on the daily return and universal stable distribution with common stable index by a fact to conclude the for common vector of the VID, VCD, FLC, VNM uh, has multi variable and very stable distributions. We need to model, model of multi variable distribution with the same coupler. Take the same coupler for this vector with the uh, value 02552. And so the coupler of the return vector is um, significantly frozen coupler. Thus, the vector for stock DID, VCD, FLC, and VNM has multi variable distribution. Consequently, the ACT functions of vector are defined by the following explicit form. Moreover, any binary combination of the company of alpha stable random vector is an alpha random stable variable. Therefore, from above for ordinary stable vector, we can consider selecting optimal investment portfolio based on percentage values of stable distributions. In table 4, there are 5 portfolios robots with the same probability 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%. 5%. The second investment portfolio has a maximum value. Thus, the second option is optimal for investment. Do so much. Stable window master are recently being applied to real book data, especially heavy tail data. The Gaussian coupler is also a tool to test better 
is stable to use and easily. However, this is just a name from part of the family of stable the methods. Results can be extended to special basis on stable in the methods like subscale table or electric table. That's on my presentations. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, uh, today I would like to introduce our presentation with the title Numerical Resolve Driver for Hype on the introductory scheme to a nonlinear wave equation with stroke containing two unknown values. Mm. Uh, this presentation work with Phạm Nguyễn Nhật Khan, Lê Thị Mai Thanh and Trần Trình Bình Dũng. This is our line of presentation. Uh, the first session is introduction. The second session is uh, decision and uniqueness of solution. The third session is numerical results. And the final session Conclusion of our presentation. Uh, in the tradition, I would like to uh, introduce some motivation of our problem in this presentation. Uh, the consider in this problem, the, the consider problem in our presentation of try in apply science such as fluid mechanic or heat transfer theory. I would like that I would like to refer the reader to the reference from book one to five. Uh, the second motivation that in the best of mathematics fieldwork of this time have been published before. Uh, next, I would like to introduce some notation. Uh, subset omega, this is the interval 0 to 1. Uh, the set quit is the interval 0 to 1. Uh, multiply with the interval 0 to t. I also introduce a uh, superless space s with power m with m greater than or equal to 1. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, time dependent space and the corresponding norm. Uh, I also would like some special fairness spaces WT and W1T with corresponding norm. Uh, a close bond with radius M and its success uh, within denote by WMT and W1MT. In this presentation, we consider the following problem B. Uh, 
uh, the problem P is a uh, an initial boundary value problem for a uh, nonlinear way equation with two uh, un boundary value at zero and at one. For study about this uh, problem, uh, will contain two parts. The part one, I consider the the system and unique net of solution of the problem B. In this part, I will consider high order integrity scheme, and I also could prove that the conversion of high order integrity scheme. In the part two, we will uh, study numerical results of the paper as the problem B. Uh, in this part, we will study a finite difference scheme and the final uh, I will uh, give some numerical example. In part one, a system and unique of solution of the problem P. Uh, the first uh, session, I will consider a high order integrity scheme, which is a construct as follow. First of all, we will make some assumption uh, x1 and x2. And then we will consider a recurrent series ZM associated with the problem P by the first um, interaction A0. And we support that the, um, <coughs> the interaction ZM minus 1 it belongs to W1MT. And we will find uh, UM satisfy the problem one. I say that if uh, UM convert to the solution of the problem B and satisfy the inequality number two, and then we call it a uh, high integrity scheme. Especially at n equal to 2, it is called the second order integrity scheme. Uh, to prove the existence of the secret ZM, uh, I need a uh, following uh, theorem. Uh, in theorem 1, we support that the assumption x1 and x2 hold, and then uh, the existence of recurrent secret ZM containing uh, W1MT, which is defined by the Rotom 1. To prove the theorem 1, which based on uh, the pro approximate method associated with the final ranking and arguments of commandment. For the detail of proof, I would like to refer the reader to the reference number 12. Using the theorem one, uh, I can prove the conversion of the secret zero f. This is given by the following theorem. 
n t r a m t o w i s w a t a r Uh, the assumption at one and at two hole, and then the problem B has a unique quick solution U belong to W one MT. Uh, moreover, the secret UM converts to U strongly in W one T. In the sense of uh, the equality number five, number three. Furthermore, uh, we also have the following estimation defined by number four. To rule the theorem one, we based on the argument of conversion and ground work lemma. For the detail, I would like to introduce to uh, the reference number 12. In part 2, we will consider some numerical result of the problem P. First of all, we construct a finite different scheme. Of we consider the second other iterative scheme associated with the problem B as follow, uh, which is defined by the problem five. Next, we use the special different formulas of G at in the number six. And then the problem file uh, can be turned can be turned to a system of ordinary reference so equation uh, as in number seven, where uh, is MT unknown function and I am for AMT is square matrix of n minus one order. Using the following term different formulas for uh, the problem 7, uh, which is defined at in uh, number x, and then we have the finite different scheme we given in the number 9. Uh, in the battle, we will consider a numerical example. First, we uh, consider the problem P with the data term given in uh, number 10. And then the excess solution of the problem B is defined by number 11. By the algorithm number 9 and the data uh, number 10, the numerical results of approximate solution of the problem B are given as follows. Uh, in table 1, we can see that uh, the error between uh, the approximate solution and the excess solution uh, is that the the error is uh, decreasing when uh, the uh, the mass of M and T is uh, increasing. That is that the the error from uh, line by line is smaller. Uh, the figure one requires the curve surface of excess solution. 
with the message of uh, m equal 50 m equal 2500 the finger one define the cursor frame of approximate solution uh, give by the second order iterative scheme uh, with mass of uh, m equal 50 m e equal 2500 in the conclusion uh, in our paper I consider an initial boundary value problem for a nonlinear wave equation which should contain a non-boundary value. Uh, the existence and unit critics of solution give by the second order iterative scheme to the problem are considered. We also can consider a numerical uh, algorithm for finding the approximate solution corresponding to the second other authority. We can uh, this by the finite different method. Uh, the numerical is same uh, so that uh, the error between the approximate solution and the exact solution and some figure are plotted to illustrate the their curved surface. Finally, this is some references of our presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Hello everyone, my name is Nhân. I'm from Nguyễn Tất Thành University, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Today, I would like to introduce you our presentation with the title Numerical Solution of Robin Directly Problem for a Nonlinear Way Equation with Memory Term. This presentation is done with Ms. Lady Maitan and Ms. Trần Trinh Minh Dũng. Our presentation contains four sessions. The session one is introduction. The session two is existence and uniqueness of solution. The session four, the session three is numerical results. The session four is conclusion. In the session one introduction, we give some motivation of our presentation. The first motivation is the consider problem of trying in applied sciences such as fluid mechanics or heat transfer theory. theory. See, we can see in the reference number one to number five. The second motivation is their field of work of this time have been public before. Next, we introduce notation for some notation. We denote the interval 0 to 1 is omega. We also denote qt is the question of the interval 0, 1, and 0, t. We denote S E a planet space and corresponding node. We consider X with power M is a superlet space and V is a subspace of X1. We denote L with power P is a time-dependent planet space and corresponding node. We denote WM, WM1T is a special planet space and corresponding node. We denote WMT is a closed bone with radius M. And we also denote WMT is a subset of WMT. In this presentation, we will consider the problem denoted by P. The problem P is an initial value problem for a nonlinear way equation with a memory term. We study the problem P in two parts. In part one, we will consider the system and uniqueness of solution of the problem B. In this problem, we will construct a linear approximate scheme with associated with a recurrent sequence. And then in the session two, we prove the conversion of the linear approximate sequence. In part two, we study numerical result of the problem B. First, we will construct a finite different scheme. And then, we give a, a numerical example. The first session, we will construct a linear approximate scheme. First of all, we need some assumption, 
add one to add five. We will uh, rec uh, recurrent circuit GOM associate with the problem B by choosing the first interaction E0. I support that the interaction GOM 901 belong to WM W1MT and then we find we'll find the interaction GOM set to find the problem one. The following theorem confirms the existence of the circuit GOM defined by the problem one. In the theorem one we spot that the exception x1 to f5 home and then there is a positive constant m and t such that with a first interaction e0 there is the recurrent sequence gom defined by the the root number one the root of theorem one is based on the approximate method associated with the Fedo Galakin and the argument of Kopanek. For the detail, people can see in the reference 15, 16, and 20. By the theorem 1, the system and unique of solution of the problem P can be given by the following theorem. In session 2, we prove the conversion of the linear approximate circuit with a e in the theorem 2. In theorem 2, we support that the, the absence of x1 to x5 hold, and then we have two results. The first result, the problem B has a quick unit, quick solution, you belong to WMT, W1MT. And the second result, the recurrent circuit GOM defined by the problem B convert to the quick solution GO strongly in WMT. Moreover, the conversion rate E is estimated by the, the inequality, the inequality number two. The root of theorem two is based on argument of quick conversion and current one lemma. For the detail, we refer the reader to the reference 15, 16, and 20. Next, we study numerical result of the problem B. In this part, we will Construct the finite difference scheme. First of all, we use the special difference formula at number three. And then the, the problem we turn to the following for the first order ordinary differential equation defined by the, the problem 4. Next, we use the linear approximate and the time different formula defined by the number 5. And then from the problem B, we obtain the following depth, finite different scheme. This scheme is defined by Number six. In the second two, we consider a numerical example. First, we consider the problem B with the the datum defined by number seven, and then the exception solution of the problem B is given by. The formula number nine. The formula number eight. 
in the table one, the table one present the error between the approximate solution UM and the exact solution U exact corresponding to the time equal zero dark one. We can see in the table one that the error between the approximate solution and the excess solution is decreasing when the mass of N and T N and M is increasing. Finger one is the curved surface of excess solution U excess with the mass of N is thirty and M is nine. Finger 2 is the surface of approximate solution with the mass of N is 30 and M is 900. In our presentation, we consider an initial boundary variable problem for a nonlinear way equation with a memory. The existence and unique of solution given by the linear of approximate scheme to the proposal problem are considered. A numerical algorithm of finding the approximate solution is controlled by the finite different method. Finally, we give a number called example to evaluate the, the error between the approximate solution and the excess solution. See some references of our presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Hello everyone, welcome to ICTCC 2021. My name is Kien from Wittethan University, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. In this talk, I will present one of my recent research works, that is a game theory approach for water exchange in eco-industrial park. Park 1 a case study with our regeneration units. And this is the table of contents which outlines all my presentation. Firstly, I will give you an introduction to the concept of an eco-industrial park. Secondly, I will present a new model for water exchange networks in eco-industrial park. Thirdly, I will present the numerical experiments for the eco park models. Finally, I will close the presentation with some conclusion and perspective. Now, we move to the first section. In this session, I will explain the concept of eco-industrial park. To do so, let's consider an example of water management. In a geographical area, there are different communities, community 1 to community N, and each community has a manufacturing operation. For simplicity, imagine paper manufacturing. So, each community needs material to produce paper, for example, fresh water. And after the process, each company generates some dirty water, and the company has to buy for the chance. Therefore, fresh water will be distributed to companies, and the dirty water will be discharged. As so in the previous slide, the companies will buy fresh water with high price for their production process and must buy for the chance. So, the aims in designing eco energy park are first to reduce the cost of production of each companies. Namely, when a company works in eco park, then its operating cost will be cheaper. Second, to reduce the environmental impact of the house production. Namely, when a company works in eco park, then it will generate less polluted water. The question now is that how to reach the aims? In fact, there are two possibilities to reach the aims. First, we can create a water network between the communities. For example, the community 1 can send its polluted water to neighboring communities. Of course, the neighboring communities will accept if polluted water comes from community 1 with the low contaminants. And the second way is that the communities can use the recycled water from regeneration units. Of course, the cost to pay for recycled water is always cheaper than fresh water. It is important to understand that this approach is not limited to water. It can be applied to energy, water, material, and so on. One of the first models of eco industrial park in the world appeared in Colombo, Denmark. In 1961, the eco park models in Colon boards have only water exchange. Nowadays, the eco pack models in Colon Ball exchange more than 42 materials such as water, electric, gas, and vapor, and so on. To convince companies to participate to the eco industrial park, our model should warranty that first, each company will have a lower cost of production in an eco industrial park organization than in standalone organization. Second, the eco industrial park organization must generate a lower fresh water consumption than with a standalone organization. In the literature, the design and optimization of water exchange networks in eco park was mainly modeled as multi objective optimization approach. Namely, the designer minimizes the fresh water consumption and the individual cost of each company, company 1 to company end, while satisfying a physical constraints such as water mass balance constraints, topological constraints, water quality criteria. And the main problem with such an approach is that multi objective opti optimization approach requires the company to copyright and send information. However, these requirements are not related in real life. 
because the company cannot send the information to other enterprise. And the second difficulty is that the different companies may deviate from the selection of the designer. Since may they improve their cost function by unilaterally changing their operation. Thus, the multi-objective optimization approach is not stable. And to solve this incompatibility, a novel game theory approach has been proposed by modeling the EcoPack as a single leader multi follow game. Figure 1 is a general scheme of the single leader multi follow game. In fact, single leader multi follow game is a mixture between bi level optimization problem and general line NAS equilibrium problem. More precisely, at the upper level problem, there is an EIB authority who wants to minimize the total fresh water consumption. While at the lower level problem, there are N enterprises who want to minimize the operating cost. It's equal to maintaining that at the lower level problem, the enterprise play a general line as equilibrium between them, so the enterprise would be able to keep confidential data without the need to share the information with the other enterprise. In the literature, the design and optimized water exchange networks in EcoPack as a single leader multi-flow game were first proposed by Ramos in 2016. Now, we move to the next section. In this section, I will present a new model for water exchange network in EcoPack using game theory approach. In this model, the enterprise doesn't need to send any information with other enterprise. Now, let's consider the process of the enterprise ice. The enterprise ice can buy fresh water GI or receive the bodied water coming from other enterprise for his production. So, the water will be mixed between fresh water and boiling water. Thus, we put a mixer before the process of the enterprise ice, and the mixed water must have contaminant concentration lower than the maximum inlet pollutant concentration CIN. And after the process of the enterprise ice, enterprise ice generates amount of polluted water with a maximum outlet pollutant concentration CIL, and the polluted water can send to the discharge FI0 or sent to other enterprise FIJs, that is the process of the enterprise ice. Furthermore, the enterprise in this model engages in accepting any inflow flux sent to them. And, at, and the leader problem, the EIB authority must warranty the minimal improvement relative to the standalone cost. That is, we put this constraint to our models. Here, n is a parameter between 0 and 1. For example, let's take n equal to 0 0.9. It means that the EIB authority must guarantee the operating cost of the enterprise ice when he works in the EcoPack will reduce at least 10% compared to the standalone cost situation. The EcoPack models must satisfy some physical constraints. For example, the constraint number 2 is to ensure that the total amount of water entering the enterprise ice is equal to the total amount of pollute water coming out of enterprise ice, and this constraint we call it a water mass balance constraint. And the constraint number three is to ensure that the total amount of contaminant mass coming to the enterprise ice equal to the total amount of contaminant mass coming out of enterprise ice. And we call this constraint a contaminant mass balance constraint. And the constraint number four to accept or reject the polluted water coming from other enterprise, and we call it a inlet or outlet concentration constraint. Furthermore, from the water mass balance constraint and contaminant mass balance constraint, we can write exact formulation for fresh water consumption of the enterprise ice, that is the function GI. Namely, the fresh water consumption of the enterprise ice, GI, had this formulation. 
in eco industry park the objective function of each enter uh, enterprise at a lower level problem is to minimize the operating cost while at the upper level problem the eib authority wants to minimize the total fresh water water consumption more precisely in single leader multi follower game problem at the upper level problem the enterprise wants to minimize the operating cost while satisfying the physical constraints. And as we know, at the lower level problem, the enterprise plays a general line between them, so we know EQE is a set of equilibrium given by the lower level problem. And at the upper level problem, the EIP authority wants to minimize the total fresh water consumption while satisfying the equilibrium constraint of the lower level problem. And the EIP authority must warranty the minimal improvement relative to the standalone cost. The, sing the EIP authority problem is a single leader multi follower game, and thus it is difficult to solve directly. In the works of the Ramos, in 2016, the author re reformulated single leader multi follower game as an MBCC to solve this problem. However, in this work, we will reduce the single leader multi follower game problem to single missing integer problem. To do so, we have to characterize the set of equilibrium of the, at the lower level problem. So, in what follow, our objective is to show that the single leader multi follower game number 10 can be reduced to the single missing integer problem. In fact, based on the assumption that each enterprise has one process and one type of contaminant. We can characterize the equilibrium set of the, at the lower level problem by the set of equality and inequality as so on the equation number 11. And thus, the single leader multi follower game problem is equivalent to this single mixed integer problem. And now we will use the, this problem to simulate the numerical impediments. Now we move to the next section for the numerical impediments. The case study consists of an eco pack model made up of 15 enterprises and the data given in table 1. And the first column is the name of the enterprise and the second column is the maximum inlet contaminant concentration of each enterprise. And the third column is the maximum outlet contaminant concentration of each enterprise. And the last column is the contaminant mass of each enterprise and the parameter of the cost given in table 2, namely the cost of fresh water is $0.13 per ton and the cost of discharge chloride water is $0.22 per ton and the cost of pumping chloride water between enterprise is $0.01 per ton. And all simulation below was implemented with Julia programming language using Simulex as a solver. And table 3 is a summary of results of the EcoPack corresponding to the case N5 equal to 0 0.9. Look at the second column. We observe that the, when the enterprise works standalone, so the total fresh water consumption is 495.72 ton per hour. However, when the enterprise work in EcoPack, they the the fresh water consumption is three hundred twenty four point seventy two ton per hour, which which means a decrease thirty four point five percent. And the four columns is the operating cost when the enter enterprise works standalone. And the total operating cost in this situation is $173.5 million per hour. And the fifth column is the operating cost when the enterprise works in the eco -back. So the total operating cost in this situation is $118.09 million per hour, which means a decrease 32%. Furthermore, in this case, we take N5 equal to 0 0.9. Thus, the EIP authority warranty that the participating enterprise in the eco will reduce at least 10%. Further, 
Furthermore, the enterprise number 6 had the highest reduction in cost up to 71.84%. However, the enterprise 2 and enterprise 7 work stand alone because the EIP authority cannot reduce to at least 10%. And figure 3 is the optimal configuration corresponding to our case study. And as we see, all enterprise had an interconnection between them, except the enterprise 2 and enterprise 7, they work stand alone. Furthermore, the enterprise 11, 12, 13, 15, and 14 don't use any fresh water for production, but they use the buried water coming from other enterprise for their production. For example, the enterprise 11 use the buried water coming from enterprise 9 for his production. Now we will close the presentation with some conclusion and perspective. Some conclusion are first, we have successfully designed and optimized the water exchange networks in Eco Energy Park by formulating and solving single leader multi follow game problem. Second, we have developed a single missing integer problem formulation for the general single leader multi follow game. Thirdly, the post in this case study is validated on the case study of water integration in EcoPack with our regeneration units. And finally, as so in the numerical experiments, we have emphasized that real water large scale EcoPack case study can be tackled by the methodology and formulation presented in this work. And a perspective is that a methodology taking into account in this present work only the single contaminant case is study. Thus, we would like to address the EcoPack models with multi contaminant case in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.
Hello everyone, welcome to ICTCC 2021. My name is Kien from Winter Thun University, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. In this talk, I will present one of my recent research works, uh, that is a game theory approach for water exchange in eco industrial park. Back to a case study with regeneration units. And this is a table of contents which outlines all my presentation. Firstly, I will give you an introduction to the concept of an eco industrial park. Secondly, I will present a new model for water exchange network in eco industrial park. Thirdly, I will present the numerical experiment for eco industrial park model. Furthermore, a comparison between eco park model with regeneration unit and the eco park model without regeneration unit is also considered. Finally, I will close my presentation with some conclusion and perspective. Now, let's move to the first section. In this session, I will explain the concept of eco industrial park. To do so, let's consider an example of water management. In a geographical area, there are different communities, community 1 to community N. Each community has a manufacturing operation. For simplicity, imagine paper manufacturing. So, each community needs material to produce paper, for example, fresh water. And after the process, each community generates some dirty water, and thus the community has to pay for the discharge. Therefore, the fresh water will be distributed to communities and the dirty water will be discharged. As so in the previous slide, the community will buy fresh water with high price for their production process and must buy for discharge. Thus, the aim in designing eco industrial park are first, to reduce the cost of production of these communities, namely, when a community works in eco park then heat operating cost will be cheaper. And the second aim is that to reduce the environmental impact of the whole production. Namely, when a company works in eco park, then it will generate less polluted water. Now the question is that how to reach the aims? In fact, there are two possibilities to reach the aim. First, we can create a water network between the communities. For example, the company 1 can send its polluted water to neighboring communities. And of course, the neighboring communities will accept if polluted water comes from community 1 with a low contaminant. And the second way is that the communities can use the recycled water from the regeneration units. And of course, the cost to buy for recycled water is always cheaper than fresh water. And it is important to understand that this approach is not limited to water. It can be applied to energy, water, material, and so on. One of the first models of eco industrial park in the world appeared in Colombo, in Denmark. In 1961, the eco park models in Colombo has only water exchange. Nowadays, the eco park models in Colombo exchange more than 42 materials so that water, electric, gas, vapor, and so on. To convince communities to participate to the eco park, our model should guarantee that first, each community will have a low uh, cost of production in eco energy park organization than in standalone organization. Second, the eco energy park organization must generate a lower fresh water consumption than with a standalone organization. In the literature, the design and optimization of water exchange network in EcoPack was mainly modeled as multi-objective optimization approach. Namely, the designer minimized the fresh water consumption and minimized the individual cost of each company, company 1 to company N, while satisfying the physical constraints so that the water mass balance constraints, the topological constraints, and the water quality criteria. And the main problem with such an approach is that multi-objective optimization approach 
requires the company to copyright and send information. However, this requirement is not related in real life because the company cannot send the information to other companies. And the second difficulty is that the different companies may deviate from the selection of the designer since they may improve their cost function by unilaterally changing their operation. So, the multi-objective optimization approach is not stable. To solve this incompatibility, a novel game theory approach has been proposed by modeling the EcoPack models at single leader multi follow game. And figure 1 is a general scheme of the single leader multi follow game. In fact, single leader multi follow game is a mixture between bi level optimization problem and general Linux equilibrium problem. More precisely, at the upper level problem, there is an EIP authority who wants to minimize the fresh water consumption. While at the lower level problem, there are an enterprise that wants to minimize the operating cost. It is worth mentioning that at the lower level problem, enterprise play a general Linux equilibrium between them. So, the enterprise the need to share their information to other enterprise. And in the, in the literature, the design and optimized water exchange network in EcoPack as a single leader multiflow game were first proposed by Ramos in 2016. Now we move to the next session. In this session, I will present a new model for water exchange network in EcoPack with the case with, with regeneration units. In this model, the enterprise doesn't need to see share any information with other enterprise. Now let's consider the process of the enterprise ice. For the production, the enterprise ice can buy fresh water or reduce the bullet water coming from other enterprise or buy recycled water from regeneration units. So we put a mixer before the inlet flux of the enterprise ice, and the mixed water must have contaminant concentration lower than the maximum inlet pollutant concentration CIN. And after the process of the enterprise ice, the enterprise ice generates amount of polluted water with the maximum outlet pollutant concentration CIL, and the polluted water can send to the discharge or to the other enterprise are sent to the regeneration units. That is the process of the enterprise ice in the EcoPack models. Furthermore, we assume that the enterprise engages in accepting any inlet flow sent to them. And at the upper level problem, the EIP authority must guarantee the minimal improvement relative to the standalone cost, namely we will put this constraint to our model. And alpha here is a parameter between 0 and 1. For example, alpha equal to 0 0.9, it means that the EIP authority must guarantee the operating cost of the enterprise when he when working standalone. When working in the eco pack, we will reduce at least 10% compared to the standalone situation. And the role of the regeneration units in the EcoPack models is to reduce the contaminant concentration of the polluted water. Figure 3 illustrates the operation of regeneration units. The enterprise will send the polluted water to regeneration units. And the regeneration units will proceed to reduce the, cont the contaminant concentration. And after that, the, re the regeneration unit will send the recycled water to other enterprise for their production. The ecoback models must satisfy some physical constraints. For example, the water must balance constraints around an enterprise and the contaminant must balance constraints around an enterprise and the inlet outlet concentration constraints around an enterprise. And also, the ECOVAC model has to satisfy some physical constraints of the regeneration units so that 
the mass pollen contained around a uh, receleration unit. The contaminant mass uh, contaminant concentration contained for the receleration unit. From the water and contaminant mass pollen contain, we can write the exact formulation for the fresh water consumption of the enterprise ice as given in the equation number 8. In the ECOBAC, the objective function of each enterprise is want to minimize the operating cost. And the operating cost of each enterprise is a nonlinear function with respect to the variable of the regeneration units. While the, the EIP authority want to minimize the total fresh water consumption. More precisely, in the single leader multi follower game, at the lower level problem, the enterprise want to minimize the operating cost while satisfy the physical congestion. Furthermore, the, at the lower level problem, the enterprise play a general line as between them, so we put EQ in a set of equilibrium given by the lower level problem. And at the upper level problem, the EIP authority want to minimize the total fresh water consumption while satisfying the physical constraint of the regeneration units and satisfy the the constraints of the equilibrium set of the lower level problem. And the EIP authority must guarantee the minimal improvement relative to the standalone cost. And as we know, the, the, the problem of the EIP authority is a single leader multi follow game, and thus it is difficult to solve. And in this work, our aim is to reduce the single leader multi follow game to single mystic integer optimization problem. To do so, we have to characterize the equilibrium set of the lower level of problem. Beyond the assumption of the of each enterprise have, have only one process and one type of contaminant, we can characterize the set of equilibrium, equilibrium at the lower level of problem as a set of inequality and equality as given in the equation 11 here. And, and so, the single leader multi follow game at the upper level of problem is equivalent to this single music integer optimization problem. And now we use this single, single music optimization problem to simulate the numerical experiments. Now we move to the section of the numerical experiments. The case study of an ecobag model made up of 15 enterprises. And we consider three types of regeneration units. The data of the 15 enterprise given in table 1, and the data for the cost given in table 2, and the data for the different regeneration units given in table 3. And all simulations below were implemented with uh, Julia programming language using CPLEC as a server. And the table 4 is a summary of results of the ECOBAC model. In the case n equal to 0 0.9, and as we see that when the enterprise works standalone, so the total operating cost, the total fresh water consumption is 495.72 ton per hour. However, when the enterprise works in eco pack, then the total fresh water consumption is 76.09 ton per hour which means a decrease 45%. And the fifth, the fourth column is the operating cost of each enterprise when a work standalone, and the total operating cost in this situation is $173.5 million per hour. And the fifth column is the operating cost when the enterprise works in the eco pack in the case with regeneration units. And the total operating cost in this situation is $117.13 million per hour. Furthermore, we take N5 equal to 0 0.9, it means that the EIP authority guarantee the operating cost of each enterprise will reduce at least 10% of the operating cost compared to the standalone situation. Furthermore, the enterprise 
14 had the highest reduction in cost up to 91.18%. The figure of 4 is the optimal configuration in the case N5 equal to 0 0.9. And as we observe, all enterprise had an interconnection between them and the enterprise had a connection with the regeneration units. Furthermore, the enterprise 6, 7, 8, 10, 5, 15, 13, 14 didn't use any fresh water for their production, but they use the polluted water or they use the recycled water for their production process. Now we will compare the the result between uh, the EcoPack model with uh, regeneration units in uh, Pack 2 of the paper with the EcoPack model without regeneration units. Uh, it presented in Pack 1 of the paper. Figure 5 is a sensitive analysis for NFA. And the red color is a red co color curve is the total fresh water consumption. And the blue curve is the total fresh water consumption for the case and for equal and for the case without regeneration units. As we observe that the total fresh water consumption for both cases are reduced when and fire increase. But the case study of water integration in ECOBAC with regeneration units allow a strong reduction of the fresh water consumption compared to the case study of water integration in ECOPAC with a regeneration units. And the number of enterprise with operate standalone for both models as shown in table in figure 6. As we observe that, the number of enterprise operating standalone in ECOPAC with regeneration units is always less than that of the enterprise in the ECOPAC with our regeneration units. And from the figure 7, we see that the total, first, uh, the total operating cost in the uh, eco Energy pack with re re uh, regeneration units is always less than the one with our regeneration units. So from the comparison, we see that the benefit of the regeneration units it is clear. Now we will close the presentation with some conclusion and perspective. Some conclusion are first we have successfully designed and optimized the water exchange networks in EcoPark by formulating and solving single leader multiflow gate problem. Second, we have developed a single missing integer problem formulation for the general single leader multiflow game. Thirdly, we have emphasized that real world large scale eco pack case study can be tackled by the methodology and formulation presented in this work. Finally, we have compared the eco pack model with regeneration units in uh, the it, that is presented in a uh, back through of the paper and the eco pack model with our regeneration units that presented in back one of the paper, and of course, the benefit of using water regeneration unit is clear. And the perspective of the work is that a methodology taking into account in this patient works only on the single contaminant case is study. Thus, we would like to address the eco pack design with multi contaminant case in the future. Second, second perspective is that. It could, it could be interesting if we can design a network to exchange water energy and our material at the same time in the EcoPack. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you enjoy the presentation.
Hello and welcome to my talk Situational Cooperation of Cyber-Physical Agents for Resilient Smart Cities. I'm very happy that I have the opportunity to talk here and uh, I hope we will learn something together here. Before I start with my presentation I would like to answer a question that certainly many of you will have. It is the question, where is Kassel? Kassel is uh, a medium-sized, for German conditions, medium-sized city in the center of Germany with about 200,000 people living there. The main focus of business is uh, administrations, logistics, manufacturing, and also some IT companies. Kassel, as it is located in the center, has very, very good connections in terms of uh, motor highways, uh, railways, major airports are not far away. So that's why Kassel is also uh, a very important uh, logistics 
place in, in, in Germany and also for meetings. It's very popular. Kassel has a university and this university is a rather young university. I will talk about it on the next slide. But also Kassel is very well known for uh, its uh, art work, uh, the, the, the museums and ex in particular for uh, an exhibition of uh, contemporary art which is called Documenta. It takes place every five years and uh, it's called the most important exhibition of contemporary art in the world. <laughs> Next year there will be another documenta and if you have a chance to go there it's really worthwhile. Kassel has a lot of tourist attractions uh, such as a, a famous nice castle in a, in a very nice park and this has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The University of Kassel is rather young. It was founded in 1971 but it uh, was built on uh, existing institutions such as a, a, a school of art and design and a polytechnical school which have existed for a long time in, in Kassel and other institutions. So it is built on a, on a tradition but it wasn't called university before. The University of Kassel is very well known for its interdisciplinarity. It has a very interdisciplinary research profile which is characterized by four keywords nature, technology, culture and society. We have about 25,000 students coming back in this winter semester again to the university after uh, three semesters of online teaching and uh, since 2001 we have a, a computer science faculty because the local industry they came to the university administration and said you must have computer science in your curriculum because we need these people for our business and if you don't have a computer science department we will no longer donate money to the universities so or the university came to the conclusion, yes, it's time to create a computer science faculty. Now, let's come to the subject of my presentation. There are three key areas, three keywords in the title of this presentation. It's cooperation, situational or adaptive cooperation of cyber-physical agents in resilient smart cities and I'd like to talk about these three areas uh, in the following starting from the last one resilience of smart cities obviously smart cities are digital cities they are built on a complex infrastructure made out of uh, communication and information technology and this ICT is used in all kinds of other services and infrastructures so the ICT infrastructure is really a critical infrastructure for the digital city. There's a kind of definition for the term digital city it's a complex networked cyber physical system that is formed by the extension of the existing functions by means of ICT, information and communication technology, which leads to a variety of different services and digitized processes within these cities. But as ICT plays a key role in such future cities, future digital cities, we have to think about the vulnerability of these cities. What happens if a catastrophe, uh, if some emergency event uh, happens which destroys some of the critical infrastructure of these cities? What can we do to prepare the digital city for such events, for such crisis events? That's the question we asked ourselves and 
that this is a real important and pressing question we can see looking at at, at disasters at, at emergency situations such as the recent flood disaster in Germany in summer this year where in a in a little valley uh, a, a small river was uh, rising due to heavy heavy rains in the in the area and this river grew so big that it destroyed many many houses roads bridges it's a real 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 disaster what happened in in this R valley more than 220 people were called and uh, enormous economical damage and they are still fighting to to come back to a, a kind of emergency mode of operation many people uh, are really despaired in, in in this area and we all know about uh, what happened in in fukushima in the year 2011 a big earthquake uh, and a, a following tsunami which destroyed the the, the, the nuclear power plant and uh, more than 15,000 people were killed and, and so on and the infrastructure was destroyed communication was partially destroyed people could not communicate uh, among these rescue forces the robots didn't work actually at that time uh, as as planned because of the radioactivity and so on so clearly the functioning of digital cities is so far not well understood in case of such catastrophes and we created a research cluster of research projects which is called emergent city where three German universities are involved and uh, the, the major goal is to make the digital city more resilient against these extreme events and crises. So Emergent City tries to address certain phases of emergency response. If a uh, let me get the laser pointer if an incident happens if a, if such a catastrophic event happens then certainly we need in the first place we need immediate reaction to save people's life and to prepare for the next step which is response activities where some coordinated um, activities are executed in order to cope with the immediate uh, problems that arise through such an incident. Then we have a phase after this uh, immediate response phase, we have to recover the whole digital city from this uh, incident. And certainly we also need to think about prevention, hardening, preparedness for such uh, catastrophic events. And early warning would also be a concern which we don't work on that much. That's uh, a different responsibility for different organizations. But our research tries to react and, and uh, find answers to the research questions within this circle activities. So the Emergent City Research project is divided into four research areas, cyber physical systems, I'm not going through all of these uh, project titles, communications, which basically tries to re-establish communication facilities uh, after such an incident, information services, establishing um, higher level information services immediately um, after communications are re-established are available and we also have an area where researchers uh, address the societal aspects urban, pl urban planning aspects in order to prepare cities for such uh, events and also to discuss 
for example, legal concerns, uh, legal constraints in terms of privacy of data, uh, security, and, and so on. My group, we are working on cyber physical systems and a project which is called Coordination of Heterogeneous Cyber Physical Agents. So, let's talk about cyber physical agents. Cyber physical agents is a term that would cover all kinds of components that you find in a in a digital city that collaborate and communicate uh, in in this uh, digital environment. Clearly, there is a, a huge variety of devices and actors in such a digital city, and in particular, in case of an emergency situation, there will be additional robots, emergency rescue forces, all kinds of vehicles, UAVs in the air, drones, and so on. And all of these should collaborate, should be able to achieve a common goal in order to mitigate the, the consequences of this crisis. For these cyber physical agents, we certainly must assume certain properties such as heterogeneity, autonomy, they act and decide autonomously, they should be cooperative in order to be able to participate in this decentralized system and as I just uh, indicated we cannot assume that there is a single central control management station which controls all of these agents. So we need some kind of self-organization, self-managing system here. In other words, these cyber physical systems depend very much on the three facilities, communication, computation and coordination. And the big, big question is how can we make sure that all of this works if the infrastructures are partially destroyed, completely destroyed by an, an emergency, in an emergency situation by some uh, catastrophe. So there are a whole range of challenges we have to address if we want to achieve this teamwork of cyber physical agents, which I call collective cyber physical agents here. So among these challenges are heterogeneity, I already mentioned, self-organization, no central control, no central architecture, adaptivity, they must be able to adapt to dynamically changing situations. Many of these cyber physical agents will be mobile agents and um, the team composition will certainly be changing over time. Some of these agents, for example robots, may fail. They may uh, get out of reach of the communication network. So dynamic changes are inherent in such collective cyber physical agents for the resilient digital city. Moreover, we need to think about how do we achieve the teamwork? How do we create plans for the team? How do we write software, implement software for teams of robots? Furthermore, how do we realize the collective decision making? How do we design the, 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 the shared knowledge base? They need some kind of shared knowledge. How do we model the knowledge and how do we implement this knowledge base? Scalability is always an issue. And also social technical concerns are quite important in terms of uh, ethical constraints, legal constraints for these technical systems that have to yeah, match the requirements of the societal environment. And in the following I would like to concentrate on three of these uh, aspects. T 
teamwork, collective decision making and related to this collective decision making is the design of a shared knowledge base. So teamwork, how do we achieve teamwork? That's the third part of my uh, talk. The, the title says situational cooperation. Basically it means how do we achieve this adaptive teamwork. Teamwork is well known to us. We all work in teams and I'm sure that we all acknowledge the importance of teamwork, not only between uh, uh, cyber physical agents, but also uh, between humans. And I have found four uh, nice quotes of famous people talking about teamwork. Michael Jordan, the famous basketball player, he said that talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. Steve Jobs, who was known to be not, not the greatest team worker at all times, he said that great things in business are never done by a person, by one person, they are done by a team of people. And uh, Henry Ford also emphasized the the, the importance of teams. And I like in particular the last statement here, which is very short and nice. None of us is as smart as all of us. So we need to collaborate in order to solve difficult problems. Teamwork is not a new topic in computer science. Since the beginning of AI and since people talked about intelligent agents, they thought about uh, yeah, communicating agents. How do agents talk to each other? How can they collaborate? And so in the 1980s, the multi-agent systems research was quite popular. There was a lot of research on teamwork models for multi-agent systems and some platforms for, for multi-agent systems. This kind of uh, disappeared a little uh, during the next decade, but since 2010 roughly, when robots became very popular for all kinds of services, for all kinds of yeah, smart home, industrial applications, digital city uh, uh, applications, rob robots everywhere. And this created also the need for more research for multi-robot systems. And certainly this will continue just like distributed computing arose from PCs and all kinds of different uh, computing equipment, we will have distributed robot systems, multi-robot systems working in the future on joint tasks. Even Bill Gates, quite early, he uh, said that there will be a robot in our environment, in every home, and like technologies such as distributed computing developed, we will see the development of groups of robots that can work in concert. They will be networked, they will collaborate, and these groups of robots will be yeah, state of the art for many in many applications. We already know that there are many application areas where groups of robots, multi-robot systems can be applied, such as service robots in the smart home, search and rescue scenarios, I already talked about it and I will talk about it a little more, then Industry 4.0, where we have a lot of robots already, maybe not autonomous robots, but this will come. And clearly, autonomous driving is also an application area for autonomous devices, autonomous vehicles that have to collaborate in order to, yeah, to provide a safe journey on our streets, in order to cross intersections, in order to react 
to lane merging on the, on the autobahn or uh, other kind of situations. So clearly a team of robots or in general a team can be more than the sum of its individual parts. The functionality can be bigger if you have different robots with specialized functions and they collaborate and they can provide their f special functions to other robots. They can share the load. They can try to compensate uh, breakdowns of certain robots in terms of self-healing for the team and so on. There are many advantages, but clearly it's not so easy to develop such teamwork, such uh, self-organizing teams, collaborating teams of cyber-physical agents. So how do we program the behavior of the whole team? How do we, quite importantly, how do we verify the safety and correctness of such dynamically adaptive systems, cyber-physical systems? How do we debug a system how do we test a system that can change all the time, can change according to the changing environment? So these are questions that we have tried to address. And we came up with uh, a solution which is called ALISA. And let's talk about ALISA. So our approach is based on the question, how do we achieve effective teamwork? And we have chosen model-driven engineering as our basic approach. So we model first using a certain modeling language. We model the team behavior and from these models we generate the code, most of the code for the cyber physical agents. So we have developed a comprehensive software framework for team coordination, which provides modeling facilities, design tools, verification tools, and code generation for teamwork. First, we developed this for robot soccer. We participated with our robot team, soccer team, in the RoboCop championships. Uh, but later, we applied our framework, and we, we have shown that our software framework also is suitable, appropriate for quite different applications domains such as uh, discovery missions for robots, um, autonomous driving and also emergency rescue scenarios. So ALISA, the acronym stands for a language for interactive cooperative agents has two main parts. It is a modeling language and an execution environment, an execution engine. The modeling is based on state machines, finite state machines. So we have, uh, or this, this designer builds uh, a model of the teamwork with uh, states and transitions and annotations to these states. This uh, model defines the roles, properties, conditions, tasks for these uh, for these robots, the behaviors for these robots, and the execution of this state machine is based on the state of the robots and their capabilities and the state of the environment. So robots sense their environment using their sensor equipment. They know their own plan, their own goal, they know their own status and they make decisions based on their own data and the data that they receive via communications from their team members. All of this is stored in a shared world model and this shared world model is stored on all uh, of these uh, cyber physical agents of the team members whereby we accept that this shared wo world model may be inconsistent on these different robots 
each robot can decide by itself what should be its next step. Clearly, it tries to communicate and align its decisions with the team members. But if it's completely uh, isolated, if communications breaks down, it still has a, a way to, to operate based on the stored plan which it received from the beginning. This modeling activity is supported by a graphical editor, the so-called plan designer, and in a PhD thesis, in a recent PhD thesis, we have shown how we can in principle verify ALISA plans using a model checking tool called UPAL. And in, a, in an earlier PhD thesis, uh, uh, a student worked on the model semantics. He defined the model semantics formally and showed certain properties of these models. Here's a simple, a simple example for an ALISA plan. It's about autonomous driving. When the system starts up, coming from the default starting state, in this case it will enter a state called stop. And in this stop state it could proceed to different states like a check-up state performing a stop behavior, going back to the stop state or proceeding to a parking state, whatever happens in this parking state is described in this parking type behavior. But most likely from the check-up state the vehicle will enter the drive route state which is specified in a separate state machine called drive route. If the vehicle is uh, an emergency car, that is, if the vehicle has certain special capabilities which qualifies it as an emergency car, an emergency vehicle, it can enter the emergency car situation state performing the emergency plan the emergency behavior, going back to this driving state, and so on, and so on. So these uh, behaviors, which are uh, circled in red here, they have to be specified separately. And for example, the drive route behavior is shown on this slide, very simple example. From the drive state, it can enter uh, a uh, crossing, uh, road crossing, where they have to coordinate with other vehicles trying to pass through this crossing. This behavior will be specified separately. Or here in this example, the street may narrow, for example, a, a three lane freeway may narrow to two lanes, and the vehicles must, must manage must be able to, to to cope with such such a situation and therefore we have this align uh, state and so on and so on. I will skip this here. As I said, ALISA is not only a modeling language, it's also an execution environment. Execution environment means that from the specified plan model we generate code not 100% of the required code, but a large percentage, a large fraction of the code is automatically generated. Certain low-level functions like uh, motor control or sensor, or specific sensor uh, access protocols, they have to be implemented by the designer manually. The ALISA engine executes on all involved cyber-physical agents and um, they receive this joint ALISA plan finite state machine and will execute within this finite state machine according to what I said, according to their perception of the environment. Every agent decides autonomously based on its own perception and 
the communication with the team members. They have a, a, a the notion of a shared knowledge base, which is stored in all of these agents. If there are any conflicts because of inconsistent data or inconsistent sensor uh, perception of the environment, um, for example, in, in robot soccer, one robot would see the ball in, in the opponent's field, while another robot in the same team would see the, the, the ball in, in, in the spectators because somebody in the, in the, in the audience has a, a t-shirt which looks very much like such a ball. So I, I'm just trying to say that uh, there can be conflicts, there can be diverging views of the world and these will be solved by particular protocols and all of this is part of this execution environment of ALISA. ALISA provides the following advantages. It's very intuitive to model the teamwork. Even students could easily get into the ALISA world of modeling quite quickly. ALISA has been shown to be appropriate for very dynamic execution domains, for quite different application domains. It's rather robust against failures, um, diverging sensor data, distorted communications, uh, and so on. The decision-making is decentralized. There's no central control except for conflict resolution, which will be managed by one team member. ALISA has a very modular software architecture. It's quite easy to integrate other protocols, other functionality, other uh, uh, knowledge base uh, technologies. And it has been tested in, in different applications domain, as I already explained. In the Emergent City project, we focus in particular on the application and the usage of ALISA for these emergency situations. Where we have this variety of cyber physical agents that need to collaborate, that aim at a, at a joint goal and try to achieve a, a joint task. So we need a, a knowledge base that is accessible to all of them. Perhaps the knowledge base will not be stored on all tiny devices, sensor devices or whatever there is in such an environment, in such an Internet of Things environment, but uh, we would be able to use edge computing concepts here in order to delegate certain knowledge base functionality to edge nodes in this architecture or even to cloud computing nodes, which may, not, which may be not accessible in such an emergency situation. So edge computing should be the, the right concept here in order to execute certain uh, reasoning steps on behalf of the simple resource constraint uh, sensors, things, uh, cyber physical things. Yeah, this common knowledge base, this shared knowledge base will store static information about the environment and also dynamic status information, runtime information about the state of the city, about the state of the of the agents, about the state of the involved components. The knowledge base will also be designed such that it facilitates the information exchange between the different infrastructure domains in the city. We are not talking about only ICT here as a critical infrastructure. In a digital city, the electricity network, the water network, the public transportation network, the logistics, all of them will be critical infrastructures themselves. And we need to know about their status in order to come up with 
decisions how to help these uh, different uh, domains in, in, in case of an emergency situation. So we are aware of the manifold requirements that this knowledge base should provide and uh, in particular it is used in these critical incidents and their uh, appraisal, the reason, reasoning about these incidents. And hopefully it will help to identify also the, the root causes of the crisis. In Emergent City we have decided to build our knowledge base on top of a platform which is called Fireware. The Fiverr platform is the result of a, a large open source initiative defining a universal set of standards for data management, for context data management, for, for management of data related to the environment of uh, some executing cyber physical system. Fiverr defines a joint common interface called NGSI, Next Generation Service Interface, and thus it supports the portability and interoperability of applications that need to access context data, environmental information provided by sensors and, and other equipment in order to enable the reasoning and the management and the, the processing of this data by applications. This uh, Fiverr platform, this Fiverr approach has been defined for various application domains, in particular smart cities, that's why we are using it, but also they have data models for smart industry, industry 4.0, for smart agricultural applications, smart energy, smart home applications, and so on. So for these application domains, data models are available already. Generic data models which can be extended specifically for certain application, particular application scenarios, but a large part of the of the models are already available and all of them are accessible through this uh, general interface and in terms of or for smart cities already a lot of cities have uh, adopted the fireware approach to m model their data and to build applications based on the fireware results fiverr will be uh, available on, on many different uh, computing platforms so it's really a big effort and uh, it makes a lot of sense for us in Emergent City to use Fiverr and also to be compatible with uh, other applications with other digital cities. So let's come to the end of my talk. What's next? Certainly there are a lot of open questions to answer. In addition to the usual problems about uh, scalability, performance of systems, fault tolerance, uh, software management, software engine evolution, we have a few particular open questions for distributed systems people, such as myself. How do we build self-aware teams that are able to react and reason about unanticipated team adaptations if at design time we could not foresee all the possible situations that the team may, may encounter. So what can we do in case of an unanticipated event? And related to this, how can a team dynamically adapt its team plan and the strategy in order to cope with such unanticipated adaptations to cope with kind of default uh, behaviors. Then we need to 
work further on the knowledge base based on fireware how do we uh, implement the knowledge base in terms of uh, the distributed architecture how much replication is involved how about consistency and consensus for the cyber physical agents and uh, all of this uh, must be viewed in terms of the dynamic environment dynamic changes and also methodology is quite interesting can we come up with design patterns for such applications for cooperative team oriented applications the second area which is very important here is the socio-technical concerns how will humans take part in these uh, autonomous automatic self-organized cyber physical systems what's the interface between human operators and cyber physical systems how do we provide trust in in the actions that the team does autonomously how do we explain to the average user what the team and why the team will do certain activities in a sit in a certain situation so trust is quite important for autonomous self organizing teams also clearly there are questions of liability if something goes wrong who is responsible for errors or wrongdoings and we need to think about how do we build in normative requirements such as legal constraints ethical requirements cultural requirements maybe into the technical systems into the software and many more of these concerns and all of these social technical concerns are the major focus of a scientific center at the University of Kassel which is called ETEC scientific center for information technology design and we in the ETEC research center we concentrate on projects and research that address the design of technology with socio technical requirements in mind and if you want to learn more about it please look at the web pages of etec thank you very much for your attention if you have any questions please ask them now or you may also send me an email you see the email address here feel free to ask any questions that you have thank you
Hello everyone. My name is Nguyen Minh Hà. I'm glad to be here for this presentation. I'm a lecturer at Industrial University of Ho Chi Minh City. Today, I will listen our research. Focus of the VN30 in that by day using a variable dimension reduction methods beyond countries. Here are the outlines of the presentation. I will detail I will detail our work from the following child effect. Introduction, data, method, experiment and analysis, inclusion. The first introduction, this table is a time series dataset including a large number of economic financial indicators collected by them, such as the VN30 index, APT stock price, gold price, S&P 500 stock index and so on. In which the VN30 index is target variable. The problem is how to build a forecasting model VN30 index account to a large number of original variables. In general, to solve the above problem includes two phases. The first phase is to perform some dimensional reduction techniques to transform high dimensional original data sets into lower dimensional new data sets. But still to preserve important information in the original data set must as possible. The second phase view a regression thickness on the new data set to build a forecast model of the target a variable according to original variables. In economic finances forecast exercise, the most commonly used and most effective demand, demand analysis reduction techniques are PCA and spare PCA method. However, the PCA method is only effective for reducing the variable dimension of data set if their data points are approximately a hyper plane. And not a while, the method is no longer so. In our other study, we have proposed KT PCA method based on the root mean square error bad model. We have so that the KT PCA method is another natural extension and overcomes the product and the PCA method. Furthermore, the variable dimensionality reduct performance of the mental outperform PC mental and family FPC mental. Second data. Data set of 60 time series predators, predators are collected daily from general January 25th, 2016 to July 21st, 
2017 include 390 observation day and is used to implement forecast of the VN30 index. The article divides two dataset into two sets. The training dataset includes 385 opposite operated day and the testing dataset includes five observation days from July 17, 2017 to July 21, 2017. The third method. The follow chart of PM13 index targeting method, including four steps. Step one, remove reduction and irrelevant variable to the VN30 index using the first the Pearson correlation correlation coefficient measure. And here's alpha is a relevant variable. Alpha is a relevant result. Beta is reduction result. Step 2. Extract factors using the PCA method. Assume K factor, K factor are extracted by the PCA method. Uh, head the form 1. Dynamic factor model to forecast the VN30 index. Head the form Two. Calculate this root mean square error. Head the form three. Build a forecast models VN30 index according to K factor. Extracted by the PCA method. And then Calculate will be square error of this model. Say chosen factor, say building forecast model, and say will be square error. Step 3 The K third PCA method based on the root mean square error. Bad model. Assume X factor are expected by the key T PCA had the form 4. Input a current key and calculate the current metric key. The KT PCA method differs from the PCA method. It only that eight factor extracted by this method is a linear rotation of the mean center input data on the eastern vector of the kernel matrix. At the end of each such loop, in the necessary to check if the root mean square error of the newly built model is less than the set, the set root mean square error. If so, 
replay the set photo the save could be square rock and the trace set a factor by the new list view model step 4 building shortcut model of the factor and calculate shortcut value of the VM30 index to shortcut the VM30 index we need to predict predict the factor using a new variant auto regression model which a determined minimum trend the hour of sample forecast value vm 30 index are calculated beyond the equation 2 and equation 5 the percentage of forecast error is defined as difference between the actual value and the forecast value divided by the actual value. Experiment and analysis. Step 1. Which answer equal 0 0.05? and beta equal 0 0.85 by using the Pearson code correlation coefficient measure the result remove 22 irrelevant or redundant variable and the remaining 39 variable step 2 which accumulated as the values percentage result of 75% the first line is table the PCA method Step 3 At the end of step 3, line 6, we receive the most suitable Gaussian Canaan key. Pan chosen factor with the cumulative agent values percentage of 75.91%. The VN30 index forecast model based on a root mean square error bad models and root mean square error of this model to be 4.32928. The forecast model of VN30 index according to 10 factors has the form. Step 4 Seen only 5 factors PCA, PPC1, PC2, PC6, PC9, and PC10 appears in the VM30 index forecast model. We only need to build forecast model for the 5 factors. Forecast model, the 5 factors are built based on univariant auto regression model according to equin files ex forecast of the five factor is the v v needs 13 index five day PC1, PC2, PC6, PC9, PC10.
out of the same out of sample forecast value of the VN30 index and forecast error percentage of the forecast results in the last column. Statical charities of factor in the model. This table shows that significance difference between the minimum and maximum value and the standard division of D factor is quite high. Moreover, the Kutosi and Zabra static analysis so that except PC2 the probability uh, the probability distribution of the remain four factor is not a normality distribution that implies the accurate forecast are factor in the forecast model of the VN30 index is difficult. So it is necessary to detect and process outlier data and use some dummies, variable, and abnormal observation. The article had not done so. Therefore, it did not guarantee that the estimate of the forecast model of the PN30 index is blue. However, the bin Watson studies of this model show that the model residual are not serial correlation. So, the model are still due to forecast with acceptable. Conclusion The forecast activities of this model is quite high. Some part effects have not been performed and processed if they are violate to ensure that the estimate of the model is blue. Combining two methods, the feature system method using Pearson correlation coefficient measure and the KT-PCA feature learning method based on a ruby square error Bad model increase the fitness is reducing the number of predictors and improving the forecast accuracy of the view model. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. All of me to believe in my Titan. Now, casting with lamps, the GDP using a Kelly Bajit.
Dumesan, Dumesalo, Reduction Method of Death. In the presentation, I will introduce the main contents below. Motivation for both related works, data set method, update the RGDP forecast, results, conclusion. Study motivation and purpose of my paper. Motivation. RGDP is one of the most important macro macroeconomic indicator often used for making economic policies and planning development plans. In Vietnam, this indicator is only released at quarterly and early frequencies. It is a, it is a no longer appropriate to focus to forecast the RCDP according to predictor at the same frequency as this indicator. To overcome this lim limitation, it is necessary to build the RCDP forecasting model. There are already many studies about that. Now casting models are directly related to large data sets. Previous studies only used the PCA method or FPCA method to reduce the dimension nullity. But that method does not Efficient when input data set do not approximate a hyperplant. Hyperplant. We recently proposed the current basic dimensional reduction method. It's called it. It's called it the KTPCA method based on an RMSD best model. Our method not only overcome the limitation but also has higher dimensionality reduction performance than the BCA and FPCA method. Study purpose of my paper. The purpose of my paper is to introduce the building of a now casting model of Vietnam's the GDP. It's been based on the most suitable dynamic factor model, where factors are ejected by our method. Related focus. Many studies show that the two most effective and use the method to build the now casting models are the Kama filter and dynamic factor model. In which the second model is used more. The dynamic factor model includes the factor bridge equation and the factor minus model. Factor in previous studies was only ejected by the PCA or FPCA method, but that method is only suitable 
for data set who does voice does voice the approximately a hyperplane where as in the real one that's not only the case by it own 2013 so the that the forecast a currency of models been the basic down the common filter and the minor model is uh, similar but the common filter require much more computation Anka Green et on 2020 showed that the highest forecast currency belong to the Midas model with medium size sets, medium size sets the predictor around 14 variable, but with small sets the predictor less than six variable. The performance performance of the bridge equation and the minus model has not been compared. In our research study, we showed that which small set of predictors the forecast a currency of the factor breed equation model and the factor minus model is competitive. The above reasons are the motivation for us to carry out this study. Data sets in my study, excluding the RCDP indicator variable, there are 143 original predictors used to pin the RCDP low casting model. Data of these predictors are collected from January 1, 2013 to March 31, 2020 at daily, weekly and monthly frequencies depending on the frequency type of each predictor. The RGDP is only collected quarterly. Data released is the different predictors in general are different. Data of predictor include, include statistical data survey data, data on social networks. Study methods in my paper. This figure briefly depicts the low casting model in the project based on the best suitable dynamic factor model where the factors are executed using our method. This process 
consistence three phases data pre processing feature selection and factor extraction by using our method Phase 1 Data Pre-Processing The main contents The main contents of this file is to add missing data deal with earlier data and deal with the seasonality of the data Phase, phase 2 Feature Selection its main purpose is to remove redundant and noisy information by using the Bayesian correlation coefficient to select the most valuable predictors. Part 3 Factor Ejection The main contents the main contents of this file is to select the most suitable dynamic factor model for the input data set used to be the RGDP now casting model. Then perform factor ejection using the method Bukubusit by us. At the end of this phase, we get the RGDP now casting model with the smallest RMSE. Study reasons of my paper. Table 3 shows the process of factor ejection using our method. Accordingly, the inner product color is the best suitable. The now casting model of GDP had the smallest RMSE compared to the five now casting model of GDP corresponding to five tested column functions. Figure 3 shows graphs of the, the actual large GDP and, and fitted large GDP produced by that model and its RM that is. This figure shows that the actual large GDP and the fitted large GDP are very close together. The standard forecast, the standard forecast zero of the RGDP low casting model is between two parallel lines which implies that the model's forecast error can be considered to be approximately zero. Hence, the forecast accuracy of the pin now casting model is pretty high.
update the RGDP forecast. Updating forecast according to real-time data flows is the most important application of now casting models. To update such forecasts, need to handle the ragged edge data. Ragged edge data is the phenomenon of missing value at the last samples for some predictor. The paper proposes a new method to handle the ragged edge data for predictors that daily, weekly, and monthly frequencies. For example, the formula below is to handle the ragged edge data for predictor at the daily frequency. On variable in this formula has been fully explained. Figure 4 show a graph of the RCDP forecast updated for the current quarter and the next quarter on some data release day for several predictors. For example, here is the forecast of the RCDP for quarter 1 and quarter 2 of 2020, updated on January 2, 2020. And here is the forecast of GDP updated on April 3, 2020. GRCDP in quarter 1 of 2020 officially released on March, March 30, 2020 is 382%. So, Through the use of the RGDP forecasting model, we can see the movement of this indicator in the real time data flows. Conclusion The main contribution of my paper are solar below. That's all my presentation. Thank you very much for hearing me. Hi, everybody. Let me to present my paper titled Dimension, Dimension Unity Reduction Performance of Sparse PC Methods. In this presentation, I will introduce 
the following contents. The first is study motivation of my paper. The second is study purpose. The third is the methods of my study. The fourth is experimental data sets. The fifth is a reason of my study. And the sixth is a the conclusion. Motivations of my paper perform the forecast or classification on large data sets in general consists of consists of two phases. The first phase is to reduce the dimensionality of the data sets. And the second file is to implement the forecast or, class or classification algorithms. File 1 consists of two steps. Two steps. Step 1 uses some feature selection techniques to remove the noise and redundancy information in knowledge learn data sets. Step two, use some feature learning techniques to transform high dimensional learn data sets into much lower dimensional learn data sets that capture as much information in the input data sets as possible. The new data set is used to replace the original data set in building a forecast model or a classifier based on the chosen forecast or classific classification algorithms. Van der Martin et on 2009 compared the dimensionality reduction performance, the PC method, and top 10 volunteer methods such as Kernel PC, ISOMAP, Maximum Variant Footing, Auto Recorder, etc. The authors so does that the trend for methods, methods can reduce the dimension when with artificial data sets, but with real world data sets, none of the trend for methods reduce the dimension better than the BCA method. Many American study, many American studies showed, showed that the dynamic factor model in which factors are ejected by the FPCA or PCA methods to be superior to other benchmark models. You 2006, Capitalios et on 2018, Kim and Swansong 2018, Sigma et on 2018, Akhil Dajar, the dimensionality reduction performance of the surpass PCA randomized uh, FPCA robust uh, 
FBCI method is is higher of the BCI method because because unlike the BCI method factor factors found by the FBCI method family are only linear compilation of some original predictor so they explain better and and can provide more valuable information for forecasting purpose. However, so far there has not been a systematic comparative study on the dimensionality reduction performance of the FPCA method family and the PC method. Purpose of my paper. The purpose of my paper is to answer the question. In the VCA, FPCA, randomized the FPCA and robust FPCA method, which method has the best dimensionality reduction performance. Here, the performance of a, of a dimensionality reduction method is, me is measured by the standard mean error or ER FM of the forecast model within, within on the factor rejected by this method. GRMSE is defined, defined by the formula by the formula. The smaller ZRMSE, the, the higher the forecast of occurrence of the model. Study method in my paper. The factor suggested by the BCA method and the FBCA method family can be found through solving an optimization problem. For example, to find factors, factors using the FBCA method, we need to solve the optimization problem below. Then the set of the set of factor F is determined by F equal to H product P where it is the input it is an input data set B is a sparse with matching. The forecast models in this study are pinned based on the autoregressive distributed large model. It has the form as follow. Data sets used for empirical study are on read one time series time series data sets.
इस परी में था में था इसका एस्टीमेट अ फोकस मोडल्स यूजिंग जी ओ एल एफ रिग्रेशन मेथड एंड इन अंडर आइडियल कंडीशंस नेमले द मैक्सिमम लास ऑफ ऑल वेरिएबल इन मोडल्स इज अप्रिसिशली डिटरमाइंड ऑन वेरिएबल टेस्टेड फॉर यूनिट रूट्स एंड कन्वर्टेड टू स्टेशनरी टाइम सीरीज बिफोर एस्टीमेटिंग मोडल्स ऑन वेरिएबल इन मोडल्स आर हाईली सिग्निफिकेंट और लिच लेस दैन थेन बोसेन ऑन कंडीशन फॉर मोडल एस्टीमेट टू बी द बेस्ट लिनियर एंड इनबायस्ड आगंतिद जब ओलाउ थू इन हैंस द फोकस अ करेंसी अ मोडल्स एंड द कॉन्फिडेंस जी और सर्विस इस पर मैं तथा शेयर्स इन माय स्टडी थाईबन वन प्रेजेंटेड स्टैटिस्टिकल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक अट थेम तथा शेयर्स यूज्ड फॉर जी अबरिक इम्पेरिको Study here the number of attributes means the number of variables. Of this ten data sets, the three first data sets, the self quality, and the remaining seven data sets, the quality from the well known database. For machine learning and data mining, named UCI. Main results of my study. Main res main experimental results that showed in table four. The table. So that there are five or ten cases where the dimensionality reduction performance of the machine method is higher than that of the FPC method family. In the five Boolean remaining cases, the opposite is true. Figure one in this slide is created from paper. In the previous slide, from this figure, we can see there are five or ten cases of data set that are residual building at NP five hundred index. Equality, appliance, energy, and super connectivity. Where the dimensionality reduction performance of the PC method and FPC method family is considered to be approximately the same. For the 
Phái bớt hén đi mới lên cây gì Dê ra Thú bớt hén cây gì Dắt được cây Phó đa ta xét CPI And Nasdaq Index Where The performance Of the PC method Is much hai thứ dàn dán gấp từ FBC FBC method family the three first hand remaining cases dán the opposite such is the case with the data set VN Sukti, VIP, and DCI in the conclusion from the experimental reasons that were we can say that the dimensionality reduction performance of the FPCA method of family is not higher than that the PC method. Yes, long talk. In fact, the dimensionality reduction performance is competitive. That's all my presentation. Thank you so much for hearing me. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, my presentation is about uh, an improved algorithm to protect uh, sensitivity high uh, utility item sets in a uh, transaction database by Nguyễn Khắc Chiến and uh, Đặng Thị Kim Trang.
Uh, my name is Nguyễn Khắc Chiến. I am teaching uh, IT at uh, People's uh, Police University at uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, my presentation includes following. Uh, the first is to introduce uh, about research problem. The second is a problem set. Uh, the third is a related work. Uh, the fourth is a proper uh, probable uh, algorithm. The fifth is an uh, illustrated example of uh, the proposed algorithm. The sixth is the experimentation results. Uh, the seventh uh, is conclusion and future work. Um, introducing about research uh, problem in a competitive uh, environment, uh, data is shared among different organizations for mutual benefit in business uh, cooperation. Uh, however, uh, sharing data uh, carries many risks uh, of uh, exposing sensitive information. To solve uh, this uh, problem, uh, sensitive uh, knowledge list uh, can be hidden uh, by converting the orgi original database into a modified database according to some specific strategy and a hidden process known as the data san uh, sanitization. In recent uh, years, uh, privacy preserving data mining has become an uh, important research direction. In this paper, we focus on um, privacy preserving utility item set mining to high uh, sensitivity, high utility item sets uh, in the transaction database. A problem statement, um, for example, a transaction database given in uh, table 1 includes uh, 9 transactions corresponding to 9 uh, purchases uh, in a supermarket. A shop this uh, supermarket has uh, 6 items uh, A, B, C, D, E, and F. In each, uh, in each uh, uh, transaction contain uh, the name of uh, the item purchased along with uh, the quantity. For example, uh, in the transaction uh, T1, um, the custom, customer purchased uh, 10 item A, 2 item B, and 5 item E. In uh, table 2, um, uh, this is uh, the profit table uh, of each item uh, brought uh, to the supermarket. For example, uh, item A has a profit of uh, 7,000. Uh, um, then, uh, I present uh, uh, some uh, Basic con basic contents content. Uh, simple E, simple I, uh, a set of uh, M distinct uh, item. Uh, for example, in uh, given the transaction database uh, has uh, uh, six item A, B, C, D, E, and F. A uh, simple D, uh, a set of uh, a uh, different transaction. Uh, for example, in the uh, given uh, transaction uh, table one, uh, have uh, uh, nine transaction. A uh, simple I U uh, E T, uh, the internal utility of uh, item E. In the transaction D, uh, it's, for example, 
L E uh, I U B in uh, transaction T two uh, equal six. Uh, you see uh, table one. Um, symbol E U uh, E. The is the is the, the utility of uh, item E. For example, E U B equal ten. Uh, see uh, table two. Uh, symbol U of uh, uh, I in a uh, transaction T. Uh, the utility value of uh, item I. In the transaction T can be computed. For example, uh, your um, utility of uh, item D in uh, transaction T2 uh, equal 6. Uh, symbol U uh, utility of uh, item set. X in a uh, transaction T. Um, for example, um, utility uh, utility of uh, item set uh, AC in a uh, transaction T three uh, equal seven. Uh, e, um, symbol U of uh, item uh, set H. Utility value of item set is in all uh, transaction. Uh, in uh, transaction can be computed compute as to uh, some uh, uh, utility uh, of item set in uh, transaction T. For example, utility uh, of item set uh, AC equal uh, 41. Uh, a symbol uh, mean until uh, is the uh, minimum utility threshold. Uh, continue. Uh, an uh, utility item set uh, is called uh, a high utility item set. Uh, HUI. If its uh, utility is uh, greater or equal than uh, uh, user defined uh, minimum uh, utility threshold, uh, me until uh, with uh, minimum utility threshold. Uh, mean until uh, equal uh, 250. Uh, we use uh, EA, EF, IM, and uh, algorithm to my high uh, utility item sets, uh, and we have uh, a set of uh, uh, high uti uh, utility item set in uh, table 3, uh, include uh, 12 item sets. Uh, the uh, research problem is the state uh, stated as follow uh, let's be a set of a uh, uh, city high utility item set um, to be hidden denoted uh, as uh, at s u uh, i equal uh, uh, such as uh, at d uh, below uh, at u I. Uh, the problem of uh, hiding sensitivity high utility item sets is to uh, completely hide the uh, sensitivity high utility item set such as uh, their ut utilities become uh, less than uh, the redefined uh, minimum uh, utility threshold mean anti. Uh, the modification method is uh, to reduce or remove some uh, items in the transaction database 
shows us uh, the utility of uh, the sensitivity item set follow uh, below the minimum utility threshold. Less uh, non sensitivity high utility item set be uh, a set of uh, not um, sensitivity high utility item set. I uh, suppose uh, the set uh, sensitivity high utility item set equal uh, item set uh, EF item set uh, AEF and item set AE uh, needs to be hidden uh, as in the set uh, non sensitivity high utility uh, high utility utility item set equal uh, item set A, item set A, C, D, item set uh, F, item set A, F, item set um, A, E, item set A, C, item set C, D, E, F, item set C, E, F, and the item set D, E, F. Uh, the follow are works uh, related uh, to uh, the research problem in uh, uh, 2010 uh, uh, there and uh, should first pro uh, propose to algorithm uh, hiding high utility item set first um, uh, S U I F and maximum sensitivity uh, item set conflict uh, first uh, MSICF to high send uh, city high utility item set uh, at UIF uh, algorithm high uh, sensitivity high utility uh, by um, identifies an uh, item with a maximum or utility and removing uh, that item or reducing the number of uh, just item in uh, transaction um, MSICF uh, algorithm is uh, similar to uh, SFUIF uh, but uh, considers item with uh, maximum uh, occasion frequency uh, largest conflict uh, count frequency of items uh, appearing in um, sensitivity high UT and set uh, to remove or reduce count. Uh, experience uh, experience uh, to result so that uh, SHUIF algorithm has a lower uh, missed cost uh, than uh, MSICF algorithm. In contrast, uh, uh, MSICF algorithm has a lower difference between in uh, 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 the in the it uh, it is so database and uh, the post cor correct uh, database than uh, it UIF algorithm. Uh, in uh, twenty uh, thirty. Uh, for at uh, and and uh, several variant um, proper uh, uh, algorithm um, uh, improve improve uh, improve the S H U I F algorithm. Uh, in uh, for works for uh, S and give a scale uh, factor to uh, uh, calculate the number of items that will be uh, reduced in uh, transaction to higher uh, sensitivity high utility uh, item sets. Uh, correction operation uh, are performed one. Uh, experimental research shows that um, the uh, proposed algorithm is better than uh, 
S S R U I F in term of uh, time. Uh, in uh, works Jun uh, and Kim a uh, proposed F B U T T algorithm is the key structure and uh, combined with uh, index uh, table to speed up uh, the database uh, modification uh, experimental results so uh, that uh, the app B U T T algorithm has the same uh, side effect as the uh, uh, H U I F and uh, M S I C F. Uh, in words, uh, up uh, lean at and uh, uh, propose to uh, algorithm M S U uh, M A U and uh, M S U M I U uh, to high sensitivity, high utility item sets. Uh, uh, in uh, 2020, uh, in uh, 2020, uh, Sun, Sun Liu at and uh, three heuristic algorithm uh, at M uh, A U A U at M A U and uh, at M at E to high sensitivity items uh, sets in uh, transaction database. Uh, transaction that uh, support uh, the smallest number of uh, non sensitivity item set are selected uh, as a modification transaction. Uh, uh, this uh, algorithm uh, used to table structure the table and uh, uh, SUI table to reduce uh, the number of uh, database scans. However, uh, this uh, Algorithms still call unwanted style effects uh, during hiding the sensitivity high utility item set. Uh, as uh, an proposal, uh, uh, an uh, ESSUI algorithm to improve the SFUI app algorithm. E S S S U I select a victim transaction which uh, supports uh, the sensitivity item set has uh, the maximum uh, ut uh, utility and the selection victim item uh, that is uh, in uh, the sensitivity items to uh, the be uh, be hidden has a uh, little effect on uh, the number of uh, non sensitivity item set uh, being hiding by a mistake or item with uh, the listed uh, list uh, utility. The result so that uh, this uh, algorithm is more efficient uh, than uh, SFUIF and uh, MSICF in terms of uh, science uh, of side effects and uh, it, uh, execution time. However, the ESSUI algorithm uh, still can uh, still scan the database many times and takes a long time to uh, select uh, the victim item. Uh, most uh, the of our uh, algorithm high or sensitivity item set but still call an unwanted side effects. Some uh, algorithm may, be, uh, may have to scan uh, the database many times leading to a lot of ex uh, execution time. Uh, in this paper, an effective uh, strategy of selecting the modified item and modified transaction will be proposed uh, so that all uh, sensitivity item sets can be hidden while minimal side uh, effect on non sensitivity information and can reduce processing time. Continue. Um, most public uh, works focus uh, on uh, identify 
in which uh, transaction is selected uh, to be modified uh, victim transaction uh, tvic and um, which item is uh, selected victim item i v i c uh, we focus on uh, firstly we uh, propose to choose which uh, sensitive item set has a maximum utility to be hidden first secondly we select uh, the victim item uh, that is uh, among the most uh, sensitive items to modify if there are many items set, uh, set, uh, certified we select uh, the item from uh, the uh, list number of uh, non sensitive item set to modify uh, this uh, minimizes uh, the shy effects uh, of uh, non sensitive information certainly in this paper we use uh, the coefficient uh, alpha in uh, uh, works uh, up uh, for by to calculate the quantity reduction rate of item event in uh, all sensitive transaction that uh, support uh, item set uh, S I need to be high. Then the proposed algorithm will modify all sensitive transactions at uh, the same time. Uh, the uh, proposed uh, proposed uh, algorithm uh, is uh, presented as shown in uh, the figure, uh, and then uh, the following is uh, an example of uh, the proposed uh, algorithm uh, with the given database is as uh, above, uh, with minimum uh, minimum uh, utility threshold. I mean, anti equal. To 150. Uh, in uh, table 3, it uh, contains uh, travel high UT utility item sets. Uh, Suppose the sets sensitivity high utility item sets equal uh, item set um, EF, item set uh, AEF, and uh, item set AE need to be hidden. Uh, as in the set uh, non sensitivity high ut utility item set uh, equal item set A, item set A, C, D, item set F, item set uh, AF, item set uh, A, D, item set uh, A, C, item set C, D, E, F, item set C, F, C, E, F, uh, and uh, item set D, E, F. Um, in uh, line one, uh, short set uh, sensitivity uh, high utility in uh, de uh, decreasing order of um, utility of uh, item set um, SG. Uh, we have uh, uh, sen sensitivity high utility item set uh, as uh, above. Uh, in la in line uh, two, uh, in line two, uh, we uh, choose we choose item set EF uh, to high uh, uh, first because it has uh, the maximum uh, utility. In line uh, three, calculate uh, deep uh, U equal utility of uh, item set uh, EF. Uh, minus uh, min uh, until uh, plus one uh, equal one hundred seventy six. In line uh, four, five sets of uh, sensitive transaction uh, that uh, support uh, item set EF uh, EF uh, is uh, ST equal uh, transaction uh, T. Two transaction T three transaction T six transaction T nine. 
um, in the uh, line five uh, because this uh, mm, greater zero uh, in line uh, switch uh, find the victim item e vic to modify the two item e and uh, f Uh, item E uh, is written, uh, written in uh, the same city item set. Item set A, E, item set, same city item set E, F, uh, same city item set A, E, F, uh, item set. Item set F is uh, uh, present uh, in uh, uh, sensitivity item set uh, E F and uh, uh, sensitivity item set A E F. Uh. Uh, so uh, choose item E to modify because it is uh, among the most number of sensitivity item sets. Uh, in line 7, calculate uh, the uh, number of item E um, just must be reduced to high the sensitivity item set uh, EF as uh, DIU before uh, 36. In line uh, 8, calculate uh, the coefficient alpha uh, for item E. Uh, sum uh, item E equal uh, 85. 85. Uh, co uh, coefficient alpha equal uh, 2.12 with uh, uh, 1. In line uh, 11, sin uh, alpha with uh, 1, uh, the E, I, E, S, S, uh, S, U, I algorithm modify the number of item E in transaction, um, uh, transaction T2, transaction T3, transaction uh, T6, transaction uh, T9 uh, to the value 1. Value one. Uh, in line uh, twelve, uh, and update the values, uh, the utility of uh, the sensitivity item set um, EF reduced to utility item set uh, EF equal uh, three hundred sixty. Uh, update the uh, value dip yield equal. Uh, 111 Eli uh, uh, third update uh, the database uh, in uh, deep you you read the uh, reader uh, zero I keep going back uh, to like uh, uh, five and six uh, I E S S S uh, S UI algorithm select item app to modify in line 7 calculate uh, the number uh, of item as that need uh, to be reduced to high uh, the sensitivity item set uh, uh, EF uh, as uh, DIU equal 12 uh, in line 8 uh, calculate the coefficient Coefficient alpha for item F, uh, sum uh, of item F uh, equal um, uh, 340. Uh, coefficient, coefficient, coefficient alpha equal uh, uh, 0.35. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, coefficient uh, coefficient alpha equal uh, zero by uh, uh, thirty five 
uh, less uh, one. Uh, calculate uh, the number of item uh, F that must be uh, reduced in transaction uh, T2, transaction T3, transaction T6, transaction uh, um, T9. Uh, as uh, in uh, transaction T2 is uh, uh, 5, uh, in uh, transaction uh, T in transaction T6 uh, is 5 and in transaction T9 is uh, 1 and uh, transaction um, uh, T3 is uh, 1 uh, but uh, the number of uh, item F in uh, transaction T3 uh, is only one. Uh, so when reducing one item F from transaction T3, uh, it is uh, considered to remove item F from uh, transaction T3. At a restart, uh, transaction T3 uh, will, not, will not support uh, the transit sensitivity item uh, set EF uh, update uh, value uh, utility of uh, item set uh, EF must be uh, reduced uh, uh, and uh, update uh, deep view deep view uh, equal uh, minute uh, 140 uh, less uh, zero uh, item uh, sensitivity item set e, uh, EF is be uh, uh, hidden. hidden in line uh, test uh, update the database. Uh, do the same do uh, the same to high uh, sensitivity item set uh, AE uh, item set uh, AEF uh, finally um, the IESH uh, UI pro proposed algorithm high or sensitivity item set and a mistake uh, um, mistake high fire mistake by uh, non sensitivity item set uh, which are uh, item uh, set F, item set AF, item set CDEF, item set CEF, and uh, item set DEF. Uh, just uh, in uh, the IESS, UI robot algorithm. It is uh, possible uh, to modify many transactions at uh, the same time and quickly hide the sensitivity item uh, in part for uh, the experiment uh, when compare and uh, evaluate um, the IE at uh, UI proposal algorithm with uh, the E. S S S U I algorithm in uh, uh, works for uh, experimental results. Uh, the experiments were, were performed on an uh, Intel Core i seven computer with uh, two. Uh, we had CPU uh, 8 uh, <coughs> gigabyte RAM running on Windows 10. And uh, algorithm uh, are uh, implemented uh, in the language. The uh, experimental database uh, obtained uh, on the website uh, has uh, 
has the uh, following character characteristics in the uh, table five. Uh, the database uh, database uh, database chest uh, has uh, number char uh, transaction uh, uh, three uh, three thousand one hundred ninety six uh, and uh, have uh, seven uh, seventy seventy five item and uh, data set must room has uh, eight thousand one hundred uh, to uh, twenty four uh, transaction and uh, have uh, one hundred twenty item uh, in the database in this database uh, we add uh, the number of uh, item in uh, each uh, transaction at uh, random the values in the range using uh, uniform distribution and the profit value of each item in uh, the database are also uh, generated randomly. Uh, in this uh, paper, we compare the proposed algorithm with uh, the ESHUI algorithm and uh, algorithm in uh, uh, vote by. Uh, in term uh, of uh, execution time, the experiment uh, was performed fifty time. Uh, then we have taken the average value experiment on uh, the number of random select, uh, selected sensitivity uh, item set uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and uh, 0 0.5 on the number of uh, high utility item set respect the three. The results uh, are um, show in uh, figure 1 and figure 2. In uh, figure 1 and figure 2 show that uh, the uh, proper algorithm is uh, more efficient uh, in terms uh, of uh, execu uh, ex execution time on both uh, uh, chest and mushroom data, data set. Uh, the proper algorithm is faster than um, ES S, uh, S U R I algorithm many times because the uh, proper algorithm modify multi transaction at the same time to high sensitivity information. Um, uh, the ESSUI algorithm modify each transaction one by one. Uh, con conclusion and uh, future work. Uh, this paper has proposed an uh, algorithm e -I -E -S 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 -U -I to protect sensitivity item set effectively based on uh, the strategy of uh, selecting with reasonable sensitivity item set and victim item experiment results so that uh, the I E S at uh, S I U I algorithm is uh, more efficient than the E S S S U I algorithm uh, in uh, works uh, fourteen. In terms of uh, uh, execution time, in the future. We continue here to improve the algorithm and test uh, the proper algorithm on other transaction database and uh, compare it uh, with other algorithms to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of uh, the proper algorithm. Uh, thank you for the listening.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Trương Công Đoàn, and uh, today I would like to present uh, my paper, uh, which is titled "Predicting Vietnamese Stock Markets Using the Variant of the Long Short Term Mem Memory Architecture." And uh, my presentation consists of the, the several parts. Uh, firstly, I would like to talk about the introduction, and next. I will mention the preparation and methodology. Uh, I also uh, talk about the data sets and what is a long short memory and what is a bidirectional long short memory. And I also you know, provide the formulation of short term and long term prediction and how to evaluate of the performance of the model. And next, I will talk about the results, and finally, uh, I will uh, mention the conclusion. Uh, in order to uh, help the investor and uh, to know the price of the, the stock uh, yeah. in the future, so I use uh, historical data uh, such as uh, opening price closing price, highest price, lowest price, and trading volume uh, and uh, to predict the future price of the stock. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, the, the, some the traditional method uh, such as uh, ARIMA, uh, that means the auto graphics uh, integrated moving average, uh, ARMA, uh, just mean auto graphics uh, moving average, and AR, the autographs, all the traders method uh, are the well suited uh, to time the series data, the, okay, the uh, stock market. And however, uh, this method uh, gives uh, poorly the results of the prediction and for which the data. Uh, and comparing uh, to the uh, modern method, okay, such as the deep learning. Uh, actually, uh, deep learning methods have been widely used for classification and uh, prediction prediction problem. Uh, for example, uh, speech recognition, uh, finance uh, analysis, image processing, and natural language processing, and also apply and by using the uh, deep learning model. It's because uh, when uh, amount of data and uh, and will be bigger as deep learning uh, and it will be uh, better than the uh, machine learning regarding to the uh, performance and uh, yeah, some study have been applied to the stock market to prediction problem and it's in some methods as often uh, applied to data from the international exchange such as the SP500, Nikkei, and Shanghai Index. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, very few apply uh, study on the Vietnam uh, data sets. And uh, these study only uh, predict the short term the, the parents. Uh, actually, a study which are long term prediction are not available in uh, Vietnam for the VNN. Uh, index uh, data sets and uh, uh, next uh, for the researchers in Vietnam in recent uh, year uh, there are also uh, some study on the prison problem and for the stock exchange and they use uh, internet new and to make a prison uh, they evaluate the role of investors behavior in the stock market based on the relationship between the investor behavior and profits. And they also focus on studying the uh, new uh, political and social relationship uh, that uh, affect uh, the stock market price. And uh, no problem of long term prediction for the increase or decrease of the stock price in, in the future. Uh, and um, uh, therefore, the, we focus on the researching uh, using the data of the VN index. And then we choose the closing price uh, and uh, we apply deep learning uh, to the uh, two basic problem 
short term and long term prediction and the second uh, part I will talk about the preparation and methodology uh, regarding to the data sets uh, and we use uh, VN index the database uh, on the security of the Ho Chi Minh City Exchange and we collect uh, from the uh, data the, from the date the uh, 31 of July 2000 uh, and uh, to the date of 25 of the March 20 or 21 uh, so uh, this is uh, the big data because uh, there are a lot of the records from the uh, in the long term. Uh, so in, in this uh, paper, and we uh, apply a uh, three the model: the long term memory and uh, spike the long term memory and directional long term memory. Uh, and uh, you know so many so variants of the INN and have been developed uh, to solve this problem uh, so as the uh, long term memory and which was uh, proposed by uh, two the scientists okay, is to define a red cell and that it can act on your receipt uh, input by blocking or passing information uh, by on the importance of the data element and the learning process uh, through the bike propagation estimate and uh, weight and that allows the data uh, in the cell either to be stored or deleted uh, the loss of memory the transition equation so in here you can see uh, equation and so in this finger and uh, we also use the b direction of the loss of memory okay, for the uh, prison problem uh, another the variation of RN is uh, by B direction of the RN and which is uh, developed uh, by Scooter and Parivore. And B direction of the long of memory and used to the uh, layer and such that uh, one layer perform the operation and following the same direction of the data the sequences. And the other layer apply its operation on the reverse direction. Of the data the sequence C. Uh, you can see here some model of the B direction of the loss of memory. So in uh, this paper and we apply a uh, three uh, way to, 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 to measure uh, errors and, and firstly it's the mean absolute error and second uh, the root mean square error and uh, number three your coefficient determination uh, also, and in our paper, and we apply the, the three so way uh, to uh, measure performance. Uh, and uh, we go to the, the session uh, the three. Okay, I need to talk about the results. So in this our paper, and we use uh, uh, the Python programming language and Keras open source library and for deep learning, and with a TensorFlow backend. Uh, and our uh, data uh, will be divided into the, the two uh, parts. The first, uh, Lee, and we use 80% of the data for training and the 20% for testing. And we apply a three model long short term memory and stack the long short term memory and be like the uh, for doing the research. And we experimented the for time with different the number of the neuron increasing from the 5, 10, 20, and 40, and for both the short term and long term prediction a problem uh, with all the three models. So you can see and hear uh, the result of the short term prediction when we apply a long short term memory model. Uh, the first column, so uh, you can configuration of the network. Uh, here, the 5 neuron, 10 neuron, 20 neuron, and 14 neuron. Okay, it's the third one. Uh, it's totally average okay, of the model, only model. So, and here's the mean uh, absolute errors. And here, uh, root and mean square error. Okay, and here's the prophecy determination. Uh, in a similar way, uh, and we here uh, the result of the stack long term model. 
Okay, so you can see the first column, the result of a five neuron network, ten neuron, twenty, forty, uh, and then here so we also use uh, the three, the way okay, the two methods the performance. Here, the result of the directional the loss of loss of the memory model. Uh, and next, and we do experiment okay for the long term prediction. So in this uh, the table, and we show the result of the long term three model okay for applying the long term prediction. Uh, the first column, yes, and we show the uh, five neural network, ten and twenty and forty. Okay, so in for long term reason, when we use a uh, uh, mean uh, absolute error, root mean square error, and uh, coefficient determination. Okay, uh, here so in a similar way. Okay, here results of, of the stack long term memory model for long term prediction. And here the results of the directional long term memory model. Yeah, for long term prediction. Uh, so and now we can evaluate uh, the results. Uh, firstly, uh, for short term prediction, the average uh, results of the long term memory model, uh, long term memory on your test data, set which errors the measure, the mean absolute error and root mean square error and coefficient determination is a uh, here 4.773 uh, and uh, 31.772 and 0 is 0.914 respectively and uh, secondly the average result of the stack long certain memory order or long uh, stack long certain memory on the test data set which errors measure uh, mean uh, absolute error and root mean square error and um, the coefficient determination, okay, here the five uh, point two uh, two zero okay, and uh, three seven point uh, two seven eight and zero point eight eight uh, uh, nine two uh, limit to three. The average the result of uh, B along certain memory uh, is uh, here the four point zero three seven and twenty uh, for zero point uh, one six and zero point nine five two uh, relatively. Uh, so and we can say that the B directional long term memory model to be a better results than the long term memory and stack the long term memory model. Uh, okay, when it comes to the short term prediction, the average result of the long term model with the uh, uh, three errors matter. Okay mean uh, absolute error and root mean square error and uh, coefficient uh, determination here the results uh, relatively uh, the mean result of the uh, stack uh, with a three uh, error uh, measure here like that here you can see here and the result of the b license long of the model and with a three errors measure uh, you can see here so and we can say that the b license Velocity model gives the best results on your test set with errors uh, measure here for both uh, short term and long term prediction problem for VN index. And um, we do uh, the second experiment, okay? And uh, when we uh, want to compare the best uh, model for short term prediction problem, as yeah, you can see here. Uh, here the result of the long short term memory, stack long term memory, B uh, di directional long short term memory, here for training and testing. Okay. Here the result uh, for long term prediction. Yeah, you can see here. Yeah, training and testing. Okay. The result of the, the three model. Uh, and finally, uh, and we can uh, say that the results show that the prediction model is the best prediction results for the short term and long term prediction. 
problem on the testing the data sets. Here, and uh, we vision vision line. Okay, the shorter prison uh, is just use uh, loss of memory and stack loss of memory and be like right, right, uh, right, and compare with uh, actual. And here, the visual, visual line, the long term prison uh, results of the loss of memory, stack loss of memory, and be like uh, center in the model and uh, compare with uh, actual. Uh, finally, uh, I will just talk about the conclusion. And we have a view of stock depletion problem. Uh, the secret data is a VN index collected from the Ho Chi Minh City Exchange from the 31 of July 2000 and to 25 of March 2021. And we have about four depletion for two problems, and we are short term and long term depletion problem. Uh, three depletion uh, model have been selected, namely long short term memory stack loss memory and b loss of memory and the results show that the b loss of memory model performs better than other model for this time series data problem okay thank you for the attention uh, now your question and answer